Today on Craft Time, CCW's own field reporter, Aaliyah, will show you how to personalize your wardrobe. Hi, I'm Aaliyah, and I'm a puppy. Today on Craft Time, I'll show you something really special. Oh, look, a stick. Allie? Is chewing that stick your craft? No, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, no. Mom has been staying up late watching a show called Laverne and Shirley, and I think the way Laverne sews a giant fancy L on all her clothes is really neat. So I've been doing that for all my clothes now. My favorite color is red, so I got Sadie some puppy safety scissors, and she's been cutting out big red letters so that I can sew them on all of my clothes. Allie, you're a puppy. You don't have any clothes. I know, but Mom has a lot, so I've been working all day sewing giant red A's for Leah on all of her tops so she'll always remember me wherever she goes. Oh, no. You didn't. I didn't what? Oh, look, a bug! I'd better check in with me. Yeah! <laughs> Gather round, boys and ghouls, for another tale of modern horror. <laughs> Our story begins in a lovely suburban home in Wisconsin. An innocent young child is at play while her parents are having some quality time together. What the little girl doesn't know is that she is about to go on a trans American trip. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a fine dinner, honey. <laughs> if you like that, just wait until dessert. Mommy, what is it, Kimmy? Do girls ever play with boy dolls? Well, that's an odd question. Why are you asking, dear? Oh, I want to play with the G.I. George. What? what? Oh, God, I never thought this would happen in our family. Stay strong, honey. We will get through this. Get through what? It's okay, Kimmy. We're going to love you exactly as you are, no matter how you identify. What are you talking about? Okay, we we need to find the best doctor in town. Only the best for our little boy. But I'm not a... You don't have to say another word, Kenny. That's Kimmy! The next day... So what did you find, doctor? I've run all the tests on your little girl, and she's showing no signs at all of gender dysphoria. Gender what? Never mind, Kenny. That's Kim! Dr. Franco, you will not deny my son the treatment he needs. If you won't do it, I will take my money elsewhere and sue you for denying treatment to my little boy. Well, that's the other part of it, Mr. Johnson. She's only five years old. Again with the she. How... Dare you misgender my child? That's it, mister. I'm going straight to the state medical board. All right, all right. I'll do it already. I have an opening on Friday between a seventh grader and a preschooler, all right? Jesus. Later that evening... Welcome, Joe. Hey, Dolores, come on in. Dinner should be ready soon. And this is my trans son, Kenny. Well, uh... Uh, hi, uh, Kenny. So, uh, Kenny, what do you want to be when you grow up? When I grow up, I want to be a mommy and have a baby, just like my mommy did. Oh, isn't he precious? Well, you do realize that if you start giving her, uh, him, uh, them, uh, hormone treatments and mess with her, um, privates, that she, uh, they, uh, won't be able to have babies? What are you talking about? Well, it's science, Mary. Don't talk to me about science. Science is what makes it possible for my son to live his life to the fullest and be who he truly is. But I'm a biology teacher. And I'm an OBGYN. You're both frauds. And you probably voted Republican too, you right-wing nutjobs. 
You and I volunteered at the Biden campaign office together, Stan. It's how we met, you idiot. Get out of my house, you transphobic Trump tards. And don't let your kids anywhere near my precious son. Trust me, we won't. What just happened, Daddy? Well, some people are very closed-minded. Promise me you'll stay away from those types. You'll be better off that way, Kenny. That's... never mind. And finally, the big day arrives. We're almost there. Mom, Dad, I don't want to do this. I hate shots. Be a brave little soldier, Kenny. That's Kimmy. And speaking of soldiers, we have a present for you. Your very own G.I. George. Oh, wow, can I play with him now? Only young boys who listen to their mommies and daddies get to do that. You see the doctor, and then we'll give him to you. Oh, okay. Several treatments and a bit of surgery later. Dad, Mom. Yes, Kenny? I want a costume for my birthday. What did you have in mind, sweetie? I want to be a unicorn. <gasps> <gasps> oh, how exciting. I'll call Dr. Franco right now. No, no, no! I changed my mind! I, 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 I want to be a fireman! It's all right, son. You'll be the most beautiful unicorn in the state if I have anything to say about it. I'm so proud of you asserting your uniqueness, Kenny. We'll show those close-minded jerks how to raise a child. No! <laughs> And now Kenny's parents have made him unique, just like everyone else. <laughs> Tune in next time for another Tale of Modern Horror. <laughs>We have a great show tonight. Lots of things to talk about. Yeah, you're going to want to hear the saga of the freezer, which we could probably turn into another tale of modern horror. Yeah, we also have an no amazing doubt. interview with a fabulous woman. You will not want to miss this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to Counterculture Wise, a Stormcap production. The views expressed on this podcast are those of the hosts, our guests, and the dog, and do not necessarily reflect the views of any of our platforms, our advertisers, or any other dog. <laughs> you listen today, please remember, we are so much more than a podcast. All of our stories we discuss are linked in our show notes on counterculturewise.com. Visit there for commentary, guest photos and links, animations, and fun merchandise. If you have a story idea or would like to be a guest on our show, contact us via our website. You can also follow us on Twitter, Gab, Instagram, Facebook, and all over social media where we'll post memes, cat pics, and commentary that gets us booted off on a regular basis. If you're listening live, be sure to join our chat on Spreaker. If you're listening dead, please stop voting Democrat, but enjoy the show anyway. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a neighborly day in the beauty hood. Won't you be mine? Won't you be mine? No, she's mine. <laughs> I love being claimed. Hey, welcome everybody to another fabulous day here at Counterculture Wise Studios. I am your hostess with the mostest, Ms. Melanie Hope, and I am here with... Well, he's my best friend. He is my co-host. He does a lot of writing for the show. It's got a really cute butt. Aww, <laughs> you're saying that because it's true. And he is my sweet baboo, Reverend James Monet. Greetings. Greetings. 
I, I have some some trivia for you before we get started. All right, lay some trivia on me. Did you know that the first French fries weren't actually cooked in France? I think everybody knows that. Yeah, they, they, were, they were cooked in Greece. Where's the, where's the, where is it? Where where's is the, it? Where's where the button? Where you, need to have, <laughs> you need to have your finger on the smite button, let alone that one. I, that was, I am not prepared enough for your bad jokes. I need to, <laughs> I really do need to have my finger on the smite button. Funny thing is, I'm doing this as she's introducing herself. And saying, <laughs> okay, dad joke, quick, okay. <laughs> that one isn't too bad. Yeah, that one isn't too dad either. Uh, 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 <laughs> That's the other one I gotta have ready. There we go. <laughs> All right. Here we have a heck of well, a show. ladies and gentlemen, we have had quite a day. You would not believe this, but we are literally sliding in sideways today to get this show started on time. We drove all over the countryside and had us a grand old day. We took the doggy woggies with us, and they got tours of a dog park all the way from Austin to Waco. And to Bucky's. <laughs> and meanwhile, <laughs> and I, meanwhile... I officiated the wedding of a lovely young couple, Claire, Lawrence. I know you're probably not listening, but if you are, um, did you tell them about congratulations. the podcast? I had told the DJ about the podcast. So they were busy about getting married. Here's you know? the thing: yeah. you just married a young couple. Yeah. If they're listening to the podcast, you did it wrong. <laughs> they should be doing other things tonight. I would not doubt. <laughs> That as good looking as both God of these bless kids you are, and make lots of babies. All yeah. right. As good looking as they are, I would hope they were doing something. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's what married people, newly married people, should be doing. All right. Well, who wants to start the story, the saga, that which is our tale, our personal tale of modern horror? Um, um, trying to do something as simple, as just easy and simple as. Hello, fine sir. I would like to buy a freezer. Here is money. Let's put it in my car. Thank you. Now we will bring the freezer home. That was my fantasy. That was my and dream. No, and for most people, it's not a fantasy. You drive up to a store, you and, pay and for it. We drive an you... SUV, so it's not like we drove up in like a Volkswagen Beetle and, and wanted a, a 15 cubic foot, you know. <laughs> yeah. We, we, it, it, we, it's a small, deep it's freezer. Five, it's a five cubic foot one. We decided on that because that's... That's all we well, need. Yeah, that's all we need. We looked at a seven... We're only going to buy like a fourth of a bison, not yeah. not like the whole thing. <laughs> right, right, right. And, so, and we'd been talking about getting one for years, but yeah. we had the wherewithal to get one this time, and it's like, okay. We, we've been needing one really bad, because the freezer in... Because I, I do a lot of bone broth, I yeah. do a lot of pre-prep, now that we're eating a lot cleaner and healthier. And, and I like the fridge, but the freezer section yeah, is just it's, small. It's, it's good for ice cubes and, and peas, but... When it comes to storing, because what we'll do is we'll barbecue a whole lot of stuff at once, mm-hmm. and I'll segment it out for different things because I make stews and and you know I I, I love having bone broth on I hand. I hope all you men are as lucky as I have to have this good of a cook. <laughs> <laughs> and and we and we're trying to cook and eat as clean as possible. So I don't want to pick up a bunch of polyunsaturated, non-pronounceable nonsense. I want, hey, I boiled chicken feet for two days and put some onions in it, and now we've got this lovely bone broth with the gelatin and all the yum yum. And yes, by the way, chicken, chicken feet, feet make great broth. Excellent bone broth. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, or I, when I make split pea soup, I literally boil the pig knuckles or whatever I get and, and get the broth out of that. And it's nice to have some on hand uh, to make whatever I need to make. And right. then we'll barbecue a bunch of different meats like chicken breast or whatever. And I'll use those for different things. And, you know, we, we live on a working cattle ranch, so we have access to fresh farm fresh meat so it's time we got a freezer it was time and and so we did our shopping and we're like okay well how much do we need and how big is it and we went to several different stores and we we picked one yeah and went to one of those membership stores where we thought everything would go groovy in fact we had it narrowed down to two models yeah one one at this place and then one at a leading hardware yeah store chain yeah so one that rhymes with Pams and one that rhymes with bows. Yeah. Right. <laughs> anyways, um, we, anyways, um, are nothing, you, nothing oh, but you, professional, you, you nothing turn, but professionalism turn, here turn at Counterculture Wise. Turn in your, your DTM <laughs> right Turn now. in my DTM right now. <laughs> okay, we, we have people who are intrigued at the edge of their seat and chat. Ooh, the saga of the freezer, they're saying, yes. So we go to the large box store with our 
fancy foo foo two hundred dollar a year membership card in hand mm -hmm. with the thing on the card itself that says for re delivery. Uh -huh. And think, okay, great, maybe we'll upgrade to the slightly bigger one that right. won't fit in the Kia. Right. And this is what happens. What happens is I I download the stupid app again. I don't I I have way too many apps on my phone as it is and didn't well, okay, think I needed to send why we had to download the app. <laughs> we had to download the app because we tried talking to a human being and well, that did the, the not go well. The same human being who actually sold us on the on the on membership, the membership actually. Yeah, it was being exactly completely person. useless. Yeah. And she said, "Well, you got to download the app and, and and order it and hit the button there and it's like so we downloaded it. We go up there and have a look at the freezer and then, you know, I, I still don't know how this works. So I go up and ask the nice lady at the counter, Hey, nice lady, can you explain to me how this works? And she said, oh, yeah, you just uh, push this button for free delivery, and it's not there. So I guess you can't have this particular thing delivered. There's only you know, some items. I said, well, okay. And yeah, said, not, but wait not a minute, the big wait a minute. items that need to be delivered. Yeah. <laughs> and then she said, wait a minute, though. It looks like I can actually have it shipped from the distribution center. So I said, fantastic. Perfect. It'll be it'll be here by the 29th. Hey, no problem. We're not in a huge Perfect. hurry to get this. Yeah. Okay, great. So we push the button for shipping. And we push the button for shipping. And we push it and push it and push it. And the button that says submit was grayed out. So to put it for you non-techies... Ain't gonna happen. <laughs> it's like, okay. Plus, I mean, normally it wouldn't be a big deal. We'd come back and get it or whatever, load it in the car. But we already, we were also getting... A chair. A chair. I, I needed a Jim, new office chair, which I'll Jim be... It's a new pilot chair for yeah. his office, yeah. And He's been needing one for a while. I've been needing one for a very long time. This this chair is nice for an hour or two, and then it's just ridiculous, and I'm, it, I work eight felt, hours a day. It felt like an impulse by the gym, but it's something I've been planning for a while, and, and they had a really, really nice... Really nice one, major brand, nice one. And, and, and at a decent price. Yeah, and it looks very comfortable. I'm in the middle of constructing it, but anyway. So we didn't have room for it, so we thought, okay, let's go ahead and go to... The the big hardware store chain that rhymes with bows and serves veterans really nicely. And so see if they have delivery and, and see if they can. And we'd been there to that one before, and we pretty much thought, okay, this hot point one is is perfect. Yeah. So Just the right size. We go yeah. there, we have a look at it, and and we think, there's okay, a display model. There's four of them there. So yeah, we're no, like no big deal. No big and, deal. So and, we'll come back and, and get that. In, yeah. Well, actually, like half an hour. <laughs> yeah. Well, was, she asked me. Do you think we should get now? I said, no, no, no. Let's just not worry about it. There's five of them there. That's right. I did ask that on the way out. And, and I, Do you think and we I should said, buy no, it now no, and it's, just it's pick fine. it up later? It's fine. So we go home. I totally forgot Do that I asked you that. You know, I totally let, forgot that I asked you that. And we go, this we go makes get, it even funnier. <laughs> so we go, to the, we go home. We let the dogs out for a little bit to frolic and kill each other. And then we... Uh, you know, I dump I the, 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 the box of the chair and all that stuff things, yeah. in, in the house. We we get going back to Lowe's. Now, as we're pulling in, take over, Melanie. There's a guy out there with the truck, and they're loading up one of the freezers. And I jokingly say, oh, no, he's got our freezer, knowing full well that there were four of them on the Meanwhile, floor. Meanwhile, I'm looking at the pallet and going, <laughs> one, two, three... <laughs> Oh, no. So we, of <laughs> course, walk all the way to the back of the store, and not only is the display model gone, all of the freezers are gone. The sign is gone. There are no freezers. The man bought four small freezers in the time it took us to come home and come back. And so with tears in our eyes. Well, <laughs> we you know, it was like, well, maybe they have some in the back, but then again, they wouldn't have removed the sign if they had any in back. So we find ourselves what Melanie likes to call a dude, which is, you know, it one of the people It could be a chick, the doesn't matter, but to me, if and you work there, you're a dude. And we found the most amazing person. And Melanie wandered off to get... I was looking for a mirror. For a mirror and a couple other I things. Which found. So I talked to her, and, and I'm saying, well, here's the situation. Now, you have to understand, I am the queen of boo-boo. If there is something that needs to be gotten from somebody and you need a master boo-boo facer, 
I have been known to boo boo face she, over the phone. That's she, how good I am. She can do the lip quiver I like am nobody. The, ooh, I am the queen of boo boo. I have gotten free phones. <laughs> I have gotten extended warranties. I have gotten coupons for clam chowder. I have gotten Literally. free meals. I have gotten complete reversal of fees from major banks. Right. I've gotten, uh, you would not believe the crap I've been able to boo boo. So I learned from her. He, basically, at the end of the my conversation, young one. <laughs> basically at the end of the conversation, she went ahead and ordered one for me. And normally, delivery is eighty dollars. Like it was like half the cost yeah, of the, it the 80, item it's itself. It's eighty dollars for yeah. delivery. And she said, "I'm going to waive that." And I was. And he didn't get his veterans discount, so I think well, that's where the yeah, I mean that's in. also true. She knows I'm a. She knew I was yeah, a veteran because they are and so they, they good don't, about that. They don't do veterans discounts for. Major big item, big, yeah. big, you know, high tag items. I get they it. Should. Totally not a problem, um, because things like that, the it is so competitive as far as appliances that their marge, you know, their their profits are razor thin anyway. So I mean, their bread and butter is uh, their craftsman mm. tools and like that kind of stuff. Butter. So been on Atkins for too long. <laughs> I blew it today, but that's another story. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so, and to top it off, because it's free delivery, I don't have to pay for delivery. I don't have to try and load it into my car. And we'll have a big, strong dude bring it right in the house. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. So it's just that a couple quickly. days wait. Yeah. And we, I was willing to wait a week over at Spam's Club, but, yeah, you know, they didn't. But screw them. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. stupid, fancy, renewing without telling me about it members. Yeah, they, they did that, too. It's like. <laughs> Congratulations! All of a sudden, Wait, what? <laughs> all of a sudden, money was missing. We've been forgetting to shop account. there. I mean, we literally didn't go there the whole year, and we were thinking, oh, well, maybe we shouldn't. Well, because the when we when we got it, I think originally we were planning to go there a lot more frequently. Yeah, you know. And then we moved out to BFE, and it's yeah. a forty-five minute drive to get to it. And yeah, it's like it's not. You know, Speaking when we used to, when we lived in Las drives. Vegas, we we <laughs> lived in. Uh, when we lived in Las Vegas, Costco was five minutes away from us. That was yeah. That was fine. Sam's we did Clubs that all and everything. Time. The Lowe's, Home Depot, and yeah. Trader Joe's, also a place we visited today. Yeah, because they don't have them here in uh, the general vicinity of the place at we all. Live. And the, you have to go all the way to mm-hmm. Dallas or Austin. So, yeah. and they really need one here. It's a college town. Yeah, yeah. And they really do. But anyway, yeah, we we lay, waited in the longest line in Trader Joe's history today get groceries but they insane i love it though because they had a guy with the giant sign that said end of the line like the the end is near yeah it was like that it was <laughs> and what's funny. really sad is the young kids they had doing it didn't get my joke when i said i was looking for the end of the world guy and they they just didn't get it but they were sampling wine so that was nice it wasn't all that good i mean it yeah, wasn't right. that a good one it's all right we did we did get us a half a case of a couple of buck chuck and a few because others and, their their prices for wine are very reasonable. Really good, they, they, yeah. And the wine, their exclusive brands are really good, and they're not too expensive. No. So, and I got my dolmas, even though they're not technically on the diet. I love my dolmas, and yeah. <laughs> I, I might have gotten a few of them. <laughs> I won't say how many she got, but it was more Nine. than three. <laughs> say it's more than three, and leave it at that. <laughs> but I mean, you can't really get them anywhere else. I mean, there's yeah, not around here. Not not the same yeah. quality anyway. But we had, man, we had a packed weekend. I mean, we, we did the farmer's market. We did the mm-hmm. dog. Well, okay, so the dogs have now been to three, four different dog parks over the course of the last two days. Yeah. So they've been a little bit spoiled. Yeah. And, but, yeah, so while he was performing a wedding, I took the doggies. Of course, it was pouring down rain the whole time. But the it was sky, a beautiful Seattle day. In, yeah, it was a lovely, well, Austin. it was not a Seattle day because it was 74 degrees. Well, so there was that. In Seattle, we would have been like, you know, huddled, freezing, shivering. We wouldn't have bothered taking the dogs. No, but it was, it was just a very lightly sprinkling. So I took them to a park in, um, just outside of Austin called Bee Cave Park. And they have this gorgeous dog park and let them frolic around and do what doggies do. And the, there was only like one other dog there because of the rain, but they had a jolly good time. Then went and picked him up after the wedding, and we did our Trader Joe's thing, and then got stuck in just ridiculous traffic, just insane. And, and we hit about the halfway mark or so. Yeah, a I was town like, called Round Rock, which we get, we we've been here. to before. 
let's get out of here. And we like the little town. So I pulled off and just typed in dog park and found this amazing dog park. Right so, near downtown Round Rock. Yeah. Which in itself is a place I want to go visit now that we've seen it. Lovely, lovely area. So when yeah. we were in Round Rock, we just stayed in the area near the freeway. And yeah. It was just, we it didn't was, actually get into town. And, yeah. and yeah, it looks like there's a lot of things to explore there. We love we love the smaller towns with the little one-off stores. Yeah, and I think we're going to have, like we a have a theater. We have, and, I want to go back to San Marcos. I want to mm-hmm. have a, spend a day in... in uh, there's just so many nooks and the, crannies the, and the fun places. McDonald, McDougal, wherever we we stopped there once for gas, but it's where <laughs> the SpaceX yeah place is because that was a cute little town too. Yeah, there's lots of just little fun nooks and crannies around, so we we do have a lot of fun with that. So they frolicked around in that dog park for a while and had a jolly good time, and and uh, then we of course had to stop at Bucky's because Texas, and uh, let them. I, I, I guess they frolicked and had so much fun good. that they were like, yeah, we're just going to sniff. We don't have to do anything. <laughs> it's like, okay, but you have another hour before we're home. And uh, All in all, it's been a very eventful weekend. And yeah. it's not done yet because we are doing this show live that with is you true. right now. This show is live, and we're already half an and, hour into and it. And <laughs> our, uh, our interview, folks, just listen. Great lady. You'll learn a lot about yourself while you're learning about her. So she's she's you're going to really enjoy this interview. Well, <laughs> that having been all said and done. having that been said and all, um, oh, this sounds interesting. I'm going to let you read this one since it's about a vet. So let's go ahead and play. Counterculture Wise is proud to present News of the Weird and Wonderful. Here are your hosts, Melanie Hope and Jim Monis. And by the way, Chuck will be here as well yes. tonight to give us some latest on the not-so-greatest. <laughs> this Poor is Chuck. out of Florida. A university professor broke a record for the longest time living underwater without depressurization this weekend at a Florida Keys Lodge for scuba divers. Does he, does he usually get depressurization on the weekends? Uh, I, think, I think it's always good to de- depressurize on the weekends. <laughs> I wish you'd depressurize on the weekend. <laughs> I try, yeah. Doing doing a wedding for somebody and being outward focused helps. Joseph Dutry's 74th day residing in Jules Undersea Lodge, situated at the bottom of a 30-foot deep lagoon in Key Largo, we're going, I don't care what you say, wasn't oh, much different me? I love Florida. than his previous days there since he submerged March 1st. The Tory, who also goes by the moniker Mr. Deep Sea, ate a protein-heavy meal of eggs and salmon, prepared using a microwave, exercised with resistance bands, did his daily push-ups, and took an hour-long nap. Unlike a submarine, the lodge does not use technology to adjust for the increased underwater pressure. The previous record of 73 days, 2 hours and 34 minutes, you know, I just want to stay there for a few hours maybe, just, I don't know. 73 days, 2 hours and 34 minutes. You mean you actually want to go in the, the vessel? Yeah, you go in the vessel. Oh. It was set by two Tennessee professors, Bruce Cantrell and Jessica Fain, at the same location in 2014. So people but, just go down there and live for a couple of months? and. Well, I guess. But Dietrich isn't just settling for the record and resurfacing. He plans to stay at the lodge until June 9th when he reaches 100 days and completes an underwater mission dubbed Project Neptune 100. The mission combines medical and ocean research along with educational outreach and was organized by the Marine Resources Development Foundation, owner of the habitat. This record, the record is a small bump, and I really appreciate it, said Deturia, University of South Florida educator, who holds a doctorate in biomedical engineering and is a retired <laughs> U.S. naval officer. Well, there you go. I'm honored to have it, but we still have more science to do. His research includes daily experiments in physiology, to monitor how the human body responds to long-term exposure to extreme pressure. The idea here is to populate the world's oceans to take care of them by living in them and really treating them well, he said. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, the outreach portion of his mission includes conducting online classes and broadcast interviews from his digital studio beneath the sea. During the past 74 days... how he gets Wi-Fi down there. Don't know. Um, during the past 74 days, he's reached over 2,500 students through online classes in marine science and more with his regular biomedical engineering courses at 
University of South Florida. While he says he loves living under the ocean, there is one thing he really misses. The thing that I miss the most about being on the surface is literally the sun, he said. Yeah, the sun would, has been a major be factor in my life. I usually go to the gym at 5, and then I come back out and watch the sunrise. So he's, he's in excellent shape, down. which you would have you to be to be some, down there that how long. How deep do you have to go before you no longer get sunlight? I don't know. I wasn't prepared to answer they that. Made it, they should have made a sunroof so he could... Hmm. I'll have to look that up. That'd be mm -hmm. interesting. That is a cool story, though. Yeah, so that was both weird and wonderful. Now we've got a little bit more wonderful. Uh, we were going to read this one last week, but boy, howdy, did we have a lot to talk about. Yeah, Sue. we did. Um, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> Ew. Excuse me while I go look for the article that can be read in English. Oh, yeah, English is better. Yeah. Okay. Without 13-year-old Dylan Reeves' bravery, the situation certainly would have been disastrous. What happened? Oh, it's on video and everything. He doesn't have a driver's license yet, but that didn't stop a Warren, Michigan teen from grabbing the steering wheel and preventing a wreck when his bus driver lost consciousness. Oh, how terrifying. Dylan Reeves, 13, was sitting in the fourth row at bus number 46 on Wednesday, April 27th, talking with a classmate after school when he looked out the window and noticed the vehicle was swerving. He looked at the bus driver and saw her head drop forward with her eyes closed. She didn't even have her hands on the steering wheel or gas pedal. Well, I hope she didn't have her hands on the gas pedal. I'm oh, sorry. man, really, <laughs> Melanie? It just didn't right. <laughs> really? He's the one who said it. <sighs> Noticing that the bus was about to go over a curb and down into a lawn, Dylan got up, turned the wheel to avoid hitting another car at the intersection, and gently pumped the air brakes. His brave, thank God he knew which was which. His brave actions brought the bus, which was carrying about 60 wow. middle school children That's a one, to a one complete full bus. stop. So not only was he brave, but he saved a whole lot of lives. It certainly would have been disastrous, said Warren Mayor James R. Fouts. Next, Dylan told the kids who were filming him to call for help. It was chaotic, he said. Of course they were filming him and not, like, calling 911 on their phones. When his peers said they couldn't because they were making a video... <laughs> Keep going. He got upset. If you can film, you can call 911. Dylan, who doesn't have a cell phone yet, recalls saying... It frustrated me so bad, Dylan adds. They just needed to be mature and do what's right. We have ruined, ruined this generation, except for this kid. Dylan, who lives about 15 minutes from Lois E. Carter Middle School, said the bus was about two blocks from his stop when the driver passed out. Although his experience behind the wheel is minimal, he's driven go-karts, a golf cart, and a car in a parking lot. He knew how to pump the brakes. Good job, parents, for teaching the kid, because I knew how to drive at that age as well. But I paid attention to the bus driver with whom he's developed a friendship. He also enjoys watching YouTube videos of first responders rescuing people. I think watching these videos was probably training for him, his stepmother, Irita Reeves, says. When she came home from work early that day, Irita was surprised to see a different bus pull up to Dylan's stop. She watched as kids exited and walked, to a, it walked in a different direction than usual. After driving up to the corner to see what was going on, she didn't see her stepson, but she did see an ambulance, a fire truck, and half a dozen police cars. Wow. I feel her pain. I was shaking, she says. <laughs> I, I hear you, girl. She called her husband and asked if Dylan was home yet. Steve Reeves, a 47-year-old health and safety supervisor, was in the kitchen making Swedish meatballs for dinner at the time. This kid's adorable. I said, something's wrong. There's an accident up here. Something bad happened. There's police everywhere. Something's wrong, she recalls saying. While they were talking, Steve's work phone rang. When he answered, a police officer told him, your son's a hero. Oh, well, they came and decorated his yard. That's adorable. Mm -hmm. Irita found the officer and her stepson in the parking lot. I gave him a giant hug. I squeezed him so tight, she remembers. The principal came up and was like, do you know what he did? He stopped the bus from getting in an accident. He saved everybody. That evening, Dylan went to both the police station and the fire station to thank the first responders for helping out with the scene, he says. And Dylan, his family says, was modest. He's like, all I did was stop the bus. <laughs> <laughs> the team has also been in contact with the bus driver who is back home and doing well, although she won't be able to return to a rote for six months. 
I'm so thankful Dylan was on the bus that day, the driver said in a text message to the boy's stepmother. His swift action saved lives and property, and he deserves all the attention for his bravery. He was asking a few months back about being a bus driver, how old did you have to be and if it was hard? The message continued. He thought he might want to be a bus driver someday. It's a great job. I love it. But I hope Dylan can see his potential to be so much more. Dylan, who was worried about his friend, said he felt relieved that he was able to talk to her. She said that she's proud of me, he says. Although Dylan regrets not pulling the bus over and parallel parking it so traffic could flow. <laughs> Cute. His parents and community think he did a great job. He did. We're very proud of him, his dad, Steve Reeves, says. He has a very kind heart. He's always trying to be, help people out. We want to encourage young people if you see something, not only say something, but do something, says Mayor Fouts. Yes. By acting quickly, he saved lives and I think forever changed his own life. Indeed, as the nation has learned about Dylan's bravery, random strangers have reached out about wanting to help him, even mailing checks to the family. His parents, it's so rare that a kid does something good, I know. So they've opened up a bank account and started a GoFundMe with all cash going towards supporting the boy's goal of becoming a first responder. Yay! Uh, one has also been created for the bus driver. As for a final piece of advice, Dylan, who was recently accepted into the Warren Police Department's Junior Detectives Program, says, look out for each other. Now that is a kid who was raised right. It's really funny, too, because every picture they have him and his sister, and her sister's just scowling into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's that age. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, younger sister, I should have said. Of course. All righty. Are we doing more of uh, Wonderful? Yeah, let's okay. go ahead and finish. We've only got a couple All more right. stories. Okay. Then we'll, we'll get into the... <laughs> Why are we we'll wade into the mire. Here? Okay. Well, this is a great story. I was... Ecstat okay. Let's see. Woman lost eight days in the Australian bush survives to see her four children again. Get lost. I was ecstatic to have this. Uh, have you ever been to the Australian Outback? No. Pass. No, there's things out there that kill you. Right. Oh, yeah. By the way, this lovely dog park on the way out, there's this giant sign that says, watch out for snakes, and has pictures of all the different types of venomous snakes that apparently live in the park. <laughs> Great place to have a dog park, people. And then when we were going to our dog park in Waco... Uh-huh. And there are a bunch of guys out there, and and you know we're, we're helping out, and and the the president of weed the, whacking yeah, and chopping just, down trees and doing the, the whole thing, and there. he he's like, oh yeah, we're we're uh, spreading snake away. I'm like, snake a what now? <laughs> <laughs> That's a thing, because <laughs> if that is a thing, that is a thing that will be happening at this house. <laughs> uh, folks, um, newsflash: she really does not like snakes. I don't like venomous snakes. Normal snakes don't bother me. Ones that go chompy, chompy, killy, killy, those bother me. Well, it's rational. Yeah. Rational. I, I hear anything rattling, I'm out. Mm -mm, nope, 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 nope. And if one tries to swim towards me, forget that noise. <laughs> Ain't happening. I was ecstatic to have this outcome, said Detective Inspector Jason Shepard. The experienced policeman knew that someone reported missing for eight days in Australia's rugged outback has a slim chance. It is miraculous, he told yeah, there's a ABC lot of things News. Out there that can kill you. ABC News, in this case being Australian broadcasting company, just 30 minutes after having prepared a statement that mother of four, Ricky Mitchell, had not been found and that the rescue crews and homicide detectives were nearing the end of their search. How did she get out there? And they lived happily ever after. <laughs> then the 38-year-old woman from Queensland turned up on the Finder's Highway, covered in cuts and scrapes, but alive. The ordeal started when Mitchell and her partner of seven months were traveling from Townsville and Charters Towers in North Queensland, and they decided to stop at a rest area. Her partner decided to go visit a friend nearby for a quick hello well, she decided to do a bit of swimming and wa walking at a swimming area near the rest stop. As unlikely as the story already sounds, this is surprisingly typical in stories of people getting lost in wild country. 
they underestimate how easy it is to become disoriented and get lost at distances of mere hundreds of yards from parking lots, campsites, or roads. That's very interesting. It's common knowledge that if you're out in the bush in the heat with little food and little water, that you can become disoriented quite quickly, this uh, this Detective Shepard said on this point. I would imagine that she's been then probably headed off in the wrong direction. The report leaves out any details of the events between that moment and the moment of rescue eight days later when she borrowed an ATV she found on a ranch property she probably didn't know she was on and drove it until she heard the sounds of Finder's Highway and ran to the ranch owner who knew the search was taking place in the area. Rescue teams report that after her being covered in light scrapes and her feet were cut open and bleeding, but no major injuries besides, thank God. Shepard said that really while she obviously out. was not a trained survivalist, she must have known a thing or two to have lasted so long in the heat without a ready source of fresh water and food. So, um, in Australia, does the sun rise in the east and set in the west? How does it work over there? It still rises in the east and sinks in the west. Okay. It, it's it. It, <laughs> it doesn't. The, Australia They're doesn't have down. some sun. The water goes the other way. Why wouldn't the sun go the other way? <laughs> you know the sickening thing about this is there's always this lingering bit of doubt that I'm saying the truth here. Anyway, about 20 emergency service personnel partook in a search that was difficult from the start. Because it was a rest area, footprints were everywhere, and so the few tracks they were able to follow out into the bush led nowhere. I'm not nowhere. the first person to ask that question. I wrote, does the sun set, and the, the rest of it filled in automatically. <laughs> so what does the great, powerful Google? Um, times for sunrise and sunset. Where does the sun rise? The sun always rises in the east. Thank you. Everywhere, and regardless of the country that or was continent. A, that was a question on the newlywed game when I was a kid. <laughs> Seriously. You know, well, how well do you know your from from your bedroom does the sun rise in the west or the east and <laughs> half the husbands got it wrong. Oh my, my god. My favorite part of the show happened when one hits the other on the head with a with I know the exactly how card. Jim would answer. What's that? My wife always rises first. D W A H. I know that's how you'd answer. Aw. Yeah. Anyway. Sometimes I wake up grumpy, sometimes I let him sleep in. Every, <laughs> she let me sleep in today, which was wonderful. I did, Everyone I did. was so happy to hear the mother of four was safe, and the story is a poignant reminder, whether you're in Appalachia or the bush, of how easy it is to accidentally walk oneself into a survival situation. That's why you always stay on the trail, duh. That's why when you go to rest areas, you stay in the rest area area. Okay, area. so. Literally pulls to the side of the road at a rest area. Vending machines, toilets. Wanders off and gets lost in the bush for eight days. I mean, that's got to be a I'll new never, record. I never said the woman was a genius. I never even whispered it. All you had to do was sniff out the smell of dog poo, and it would have taken you right back to the rest stop. Hmm. All right, we haven't done a wine of the week in a long, long time. And since so the second half of tonight? our show is an interview... We don't have to worry about hashtag save the keyboard. So we got this really, I think we literally bought this one because of the picture the, on the label. The, the, the floating pig, very pink the, Floydian. The, the, the large purple porcine on, <laughs> and this is a Spanish wine called La Granja. It's a Tempranillo. Which and it's we like, we like Tempranillo. White, lovely. Yeah. A magic place in the south where the sun never sets, where it's always summer and exquisite aromas. Of ever found fruits and flowers fill the shiny rooms of a magic farm. Welcome to La Grana 360. It's vegan friendly, but I, I think anything that gets vegans drunk and shuts them up is friendly. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Supposed to have flavors of ripe red fruit and plum, because a plum isn't a fruit apparently. Balanced bouquet uh, with some floral notes. Now, does it have alcohol? It does have alcohol. <laughs> okay. It has it has a lovely bouquet. <laughs> and Jim, what would this go well with? I don't know. I haven't had it yet. Nope. And Jim, what would this go well with? <laughs> Steak. <laughs> well, let's find out anyway. I'm about to have a sip. Cheers, love. Cheers. Actually, it was very, very nice. It was very mu- much more mild and and mm-hmm. medium balanced. This is going to go very be. well with the thirty dollar brie that we got at the farmers market. <laughs> Good lord! 
it tasted so good. I was like, oh, yeah, let's get some of that. And then he brings it up. I'm like, okay, I guess we're getting some of that. <laughs> Actually, he was very nice. He, he was, was, super he was nice. very generously handing out very samples of all of his cheeses. Samples, yeah. And every single one of them was divine. Fantastic, yeah. And so. he, he's won awards. And and we we love supporting local businesses. Yeah. So we, we try to eat as local as possible. So we got turnips. And now we have a we, freezer. And by the way, the story of how we got this freezer. Oh, my God. You wouldn't believe it. You know, it started like a few months ago. We said, hey, that's a nice one. It's a hot point from GE at, at, at the, the place where I was at Bros. And one sip of wine, and he's retelling stories. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was... Two sips of wine, and he'll be singing to the cats. <laughs> I don't need two sips of wine to sing to the cats. <laughs> it's true. I sing at the cats the moment they show up. That is true. Each kitty, ever since, each ever kitty since cat has the day, their own song. Uh, the days of Barnsey Barn. No, that was. You know, I've, I've, and this is, has nothing to do with anything we were talking about on the show, but um, every year, cats and dogs feel more and more like members of family to me, and not just accessories or anything like that. Um, it, I don't know how normal it is. I have no idea how old it is, but I consider these pets to be complete and total family. Anywho, on that ser- way too stupidly serious note, what would you like to do next? Well, did we? Oh, we can save that for next. next yeah, week. let's. I promised. Right. I promised our blurb would be nice things. Yes, nice thing. <laughs> this first one's going to be fun. Okay, here we go. Uh, Now, see, that's why we can't have nice things. You're kidding me? Okay. (laughs) This is funny. The headline is wonderful. More penguins than Europeans can use Google Bard. (laughs) Google Bard, the search giant's chat GPT rival, is already available in 180 countries and territories, but even though it's been widely available for months... And was the centerpiece of Google's recent I.O. event, it's missing one big region. The 450 million people living in the European Union are still unable to access BARD. That might not be a bad thing. Yeah. Or any of the company's other generative AI technologies. It's a move that has surprised lawmakers, and even Google won't say why. It's holding it back. Mm Mm-hmm. Brando Benefi, the MEP leading the negotiations on Europe's new artificial intelligence rules, is not sure why the block had been excluded, describing the omission of the EU from Bard's rollout as a big issue. The number of experts who spoke to Wired suspect that Google is using Bard to send a message that the EU's laws around privacy and online safety aren't to its liking. What a oh, shame. No! oh, no! Google's not able to buy all your infos. <laughs> But more than this, it could be a sign that the generative AI technology, as it exists now, is fundamentally incompatible with existing and developing privacy and online safety laws in the EU. So just tell them. I don't understand why it's not telling them. The uncertainty around Bard's rollout in the region comes as the bloc's lawmakers are negotiating new draft rules to govern artificial intelligence via the fledgling AI Act. A number of existing laws from GDPR to the Digital Services Act may also be holding up the rollout of generative AI systems in the block. It's possible they are taking the opportunity to send a message to the MEPS just before AI Act is approved, trying to stir the votes and to make sure the policymakers think twice before trying to govern foundation models. (laughs) So they're just, they don't know. They're just like, guessing. And of course Google has declined a request to comment on it. Um, <laughs> so. if, if, if Google has doubts about your, your policies about privacy, then it's probably a good thing not mm. to bother with it. Google I'm, just, I'm still in the dark as to what all of this is going to mean for us in the future. Okay, I'm going to say something really controversial. Okay. I don't believe AI is real. I just don't. Well, that's because it's artificial. That's, hence, it's even in the in Well, I mean, I don't believe it's actually intelligent or can learn or is doing anything other than just looking up stuff on Google. 
and the way it's programmed, it very clearly reflects the political beliefs of the people programming it. I mean, they, they were doing a lot with chat chatbot where you'll ask it, you know, write me a poem about Donald Trump. And it's like, oh, I can't do that. And then they'll say, write me a poem about Joe Biden. And it just espouses how wonderful he is and this and that. It's like, that's not real. That's not an intelligent program that that it's just a biased it's basically a really fancy version of of organ trail <laughs> that's really all it is it, i'm just i'm not impressed i'm not even interested in it people are spending people really think that they're talking to an entity and and they're spending money and they're talking about you know, sex robots and all kinds of crazy things. Yeah, well, we'll be making love to replicants in a few years. Anyways, nobody in the EU can access Google's Bard chatbot, but the 50,000 penguins who live on a dormant volcano in the South Atlantic can sign up right now. <laughs> that I have, what, to, I have to hand it to Wired. That was a brilliant take. I like the angle that they came in with that because it was kind of a boring article. But the angle made it interesting enough to read here. That's hilarious. All right. So this next one. Who has two thumbs and said this was going to happen? <laughs> Most likely it was you, Miss Hope. <laughs> All right. In our colormesurprise.com. Colormesurprise.com. <laughs> Marijuana use among U.S. workers reached historic highs, so to speak, in 2022, according to study findings released Thursday by Quest Diagnostics. The lab company analyzed over 6 million general workforce urine tests in 2022, determining 4.3% were positive for cannabis, up from 3.9% in 2021. This represents the highest number of marijuana-positive test results ever recorded by Quest, which began analyzing workplace drug testing data in 1988. Quest also found that 7.3% of workers who had suffered a workplace injury tested positive for marijuana in 2022, up from 6.7% in 2021, marking the highest positivity rate in 25 years. The historic rise seems to correspond with sharp increases in positivity for for marijuana in both pre-employment and post-accident drug tests, suggesting that changing societal attitudes about marijuana may be impacting workplace behaviors. Keith Ward, general manager and vice president for Employer Solutions at Quest, said in a statement. According to Quest, the industries that saw the greatest increase in their positivity rates over the past five years were hospitality and food services, up 42.9%, retail 42.6%, and finance and insurance 38.5%. Listen, if you're in one of those fields, I don't blame you for wanting to get stoned <laughs> but you probably I mean, I'm, shouldn't. I'm, I'm, su- I'm surprised call center workers right up, right, aren't right up there with them so yeah how much better would some of those calls go hey man chill out it's all right i'll get your information man mm. it's right over here <laughs> did you want that number <laughs> it starts with the q <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh it's uh, it goes on and on and on and on. Oh like wow, it's charts say. and and all yeah, kinds of fun things. Yeah, it's more than I want to talk about. Anyways, Just, apparently a sharp increase in workplace accidents and surprise, surprise. <laughs> it's also a sharp looped. increase in here. Yeah. Yeah, it's because they're looped. Yeah. So what can employers do if it's legal? Not much. I mean, they can. They can. I mean, I mean it don't can get still, stoned while you're at work. It, duh. It's, it's um, depends on what work you do, but like if you're in industrial work, working in a factory or something like that, um, probably not the best idea. Probably not the best idea, and that doesn't, you know, having it legal in your state doesn't prevent businesses from, you know, enforcing anti-drunk or drug. They're gonna make. I mean, this they a- can't. They're going to make this a gender now. They are? Yeah. They're going to make this a gender that? so you can't fire them. So <laughs> is Mary Jane going to be a new gender? All right. <laughs> you know they're going to yeah, do, but they're the, gonna do the, something. It's racist. It can still be, just because it's legal doesn't, I mean, 
drinking is legal in all 50 states, but that doesn't mean you can show up to work snockered, you know? It's yeah. just, that's that's not how it works. So it doesn't have, that, that in itself wouldn't have much to do with it. <laughs> okay. Somebody had fun with this next one. A Chicago man is facing a bucket of felony charges after allegedly robbing a man at gunpoint and then staying at the scene to eat the victim's fried chicken. <laughs> a bucket of felony charges. Chicago police arrived, of course it's Chicago. Chicago police arrived at the robbery scene within minutes and allegedly found James Taylor, tw- James Taylor, 20, still there, enjoying You've the victim's delicious fiend. fried chicken. <laughs> yeah. Uh, officials said the victim, 35, parked in front of his home, and, the, and you don't need to know where it is, and started to head toward his residence with his piping hot yard bird. Taylor interrupted him to ask for a light, but the victim said he didn't have one and kept walking. Taylor then tapped the man on the shoulder. When the victim turned around, Taylor was pointing a pistol at his face. Prosecutor Kenneth Plush said the victim handed over his keys to, count them, $2 in cash, a debit card, and the fried chicken. Give me your drumsticks now! <laughs> Why do I think this is probably churches? Because everybody goes bats at churches, beats each other up, <laughs> shoots each other. Is, is it, it churches or Popeyes? It doesn't, it doesn't say. Oh, I meant Popeyes, not churches. I have no idea. It doesn't Do, say. Does Popeyes do, like, fried? Yeah. Wait, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's mostly what Taylor, they do. according to Flesh, climbed into the victim's car and went to work on the chicken. While the victim dialed nine one, so literally, dude gets in car and is just like nom 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 nom. Must be some pretty darn good chicken. I hope he you is charged it. with armed robbery with a firearm, aggravated unlawful use of a weapon, aggravated possession of a stolen motor vehicle, and illegal possession of a debit card, as well as gluttony. <laughs> uh, he has to pay fifteen thousand dollar bail deposit to go home on electric. If he electronic ain't bright monitoring. enough to eat and drive at the same time. The judge also advised Taylor, who has no criminal background, that he faces a minimum sentence of 21 years in prison if convicted of the armed robbery charge. He's in Chicago. He won't see a day. However, prosecutors routinely offer defendants in similar situations the opportunity to plead guilty at a reduced charge for significantly lighter punishments. He should have to work at KFC. (laughs) Without having any of the benefits. What an idiot. (laughs) What an idiot. That, That was dumb. And this is an interesting article. I don't know how much of it I want to read. I don't even know if I want to read it, quite frankly. It's a woman defending her... Well, let's let's put it this way. I'm unschooling my kids. Why we won't teach them to read and write. Wait, what? That's, that's the headline. But, but why? The world is their playground and their teacher. Adele and Matt Allen are raising their three children with child autonomy, allowing their kids to set their own curriculum... Bedtimes, menus, meal times, and chore lists. Yeah, that's going to go over well. Have fun. You know, I hate having to pay taxes for it's welfare for people like this. It, it's in the UK. It still gets there somehow. I mean, hell, we send our money everywhere but here. That's true. Well, we're coming up on. Uh... <laughs> Chat says that last uh, that last criminal had a bucket list. <laughs> He's succeeding with his bucket list. Mm. All right. Uh, finish talking about these unschooled children because okay. these kids look thrilled. The Allens, who live in Brighton, fully embrace the unconventional parenting style that aligns with their frugal and natural living habitats. Man. Yeah, man. We got into natural living These guys ain't passing no drug tests so at work. So it just became a natural progression that continued to begin to affect all our decisions after I fell pregnant. You felt something, dear. dear. Hmm. The parents, who are both 39, don't trust the health care education system as well, okay. Okay, I, I that get That much I understand. That. Have allowed their children Ulysses, Ulysses? Ostara, <laughs> and Kai. <laughs> oh, my sweet Jesus. 12, 8, and 4. To make their cho- own choices from a very young age. We don't do va- didn't do vaccinations for our kids which people say is cruel of us, and we don't use the health care system. You know what? I bet you those kids are healthy. The kids are probably healthy, brilliant. and they're, they're, they're going to be crazy. But, um, instead, but they do need to be taught. Instead, we use natural and herbal remedies, the mother of three revealed. All of her children are breastfed until they're at least three years old, which, uh, which, the, which the parents believe has given the kids you know, a good healthy foundation. She's half right, though. She's half yeah. right. 
And the kids look healthy and happy. But they should be schooled. We also don't use the education system. Instead, we unschool our kids. This means they have to show an interest in something for us to explore it with them instead of following a curriculum and telling them what they're going to learn. You know, this has been, okay, this is kind of stupid. She's winning me over. (laughs) Oh, boy. Me too. Dang it. But I still think you should do the you don't have to like it, but you have to try it thing. Yeah. So they shouldn't be like, oh, mother, I think I shall try algebra today. You should be like, hey, you want to see what algebra looks like? You know, so. Okay. This next paragraph makes you feel a bit better about the whole thing. She yeah, said, she's winning me over. I'm going to be honest. She said the couple believe in child autonomy and enabling kids to take governance of their life, make their own choices, and decide what goes on in their own life rather than dictating to them, but defended her lifestyle, explaining that this doesn't mean no guidance. Mm. It's just about involving them in the decisions. The Allens don't believe that parents should decide what their children do and instead allow their children to find what makes them happy and follow their lead. Well, what happens if what makes them happy is sticking their fingers in light sockets and swallowing arsenic? They don't seem that stupid. This wouldn't work for every child. That's that's pretty much the message I have. This doesn't work for most adults even, so... But yeah, there's... Yeah, there's just a little girl sewing with a real sewing machine. And then... Uh, beekeeping. beekeeping. So yeah, I mean, it's not... It, it isn't like... You get to just sit home. One of them's a barefooter. Go barefooters. So, okay, this is why we can. Okay, our son was 10 years old when he began taking an interest in wanting to read and write. He just picked up a pen and paper and taught himself. He wasn't bothered about us teaching him. Language is all around them, so they are bound to pick it up. With them not being in a classroom setting, there isn't the pressure to do certain things by a certain age. Um, Her daughter expressed an interest in sewing, so she's honing that skill while her eldest, Ulysses, is currently exploring his passion for animals and computers. I, I, she won me over. I, I'm totally okay. won over. This is no longer why we can't have nice no, things. No, this is this actually... Next! Actually won me. They do need a dentist, though. <laughs> do you see the parents at the bottom? No, I, I did not. Yeah, scroll down. They, they definitely need a bit. Um, Just as I got to it. Okay, yeah, they have British teeth for show. Sure. Yeah. I oh, know, they, they are all right. They're cute. They're actually a cute couple. Yeah, um, cause people will just assume, because that's where I was at the beginning, that they're lazy or cruel and they're being dum-dums. But no, it sounds to me... No, these are these are people who I mean, the, the, to, they shouldn't have waited until 10 to teach them how to read, because that all that time he was missing out on the joy. I mean, I started reading when I was five. Me too. And I remember... No, actually, when I was three. I, it's, three? I, yeah. see, I don't remember that far back. I, I, I had One of my oldest, oldest memories is sitting on the toilet reading Donald Duck car- comics. My, my mom had a, a, one of those footlocker things at the bottom mm-hmm. of the bed, yeah. completely filled with comics. We had the, the Beagle Boys and oh, wow. um, Scrooge lots McDuck. Of, lots of and all the Disney stuff. All the classic, yeah, Scrooge mm-hmm. McDuck and... and um, we didn't do any Mickey Mouse. It was mostly Donald Duck and Scrooge and Beagle Boys and, and all of those. And, um, yeah, and I would read those as a little, little girl. And the dictionary. Loved the dictionary. I would just read the dictionary because it was interesting. And that's probably what made me a relatively decent writer. I read the encyclopedia writer. a lot. Yeah, I had that, that little... Um, we had Britannica. Junior Britannica. That's what kids. we had, the red ones with yeah. the gold stripes on yeah. them. Yep, yeah. I had those. And then all of the Disney books and the Disney on tape and all of those. And then everything Dr. Seuss. In fact, that was one of my first gifts that I gave my, my baby brother. As soon as he could read, I gave him the entire Dr. Seuss collection. Wow, you know how much that'd be worth with so many of them yeah, having I'm been sure. discontinued. That and his Legos. A kid had like every Lego known to man. Mm-hmm. So, no, she won me over. Yeah. She won me over. Well. I would, I would totally do that with my kids. But I would, again, do the... You don't have to like it, but you have to try it. Okay, here's basic this, here's basic that, here's basic this. What do you like doing? What, what you know, and I would do it in a fun way, because that's what I do with my kids when I'm tutoring them. It's like, okay, well, yeah, we can sit here and do long division, or we could do a puzzle that requires a little bit of long division and find different ways of doing it so that we can complete the puzzle. Mm-hmm. And, and then they come out the other side getting it, you know? But you, I think what people would find is if you let kids choose what they want to learn, They'll learn way more yeah. than what they would ever learn in school. And I think lot, school and, and stunts their growth. I really lot, do. In a lot of ways because you're, you're forced to learn things that 
aren't may not necessarily be a practical value to you. Yeah, you want to learn reading, you want to learn uh, arithmetic, you do want to learn how to write, but beyond that, I mean, I have no use for most of what I learned in high school. Even if I were to go to college, it'd be starting over again because they didn't teach me a lot of the stuff that they would teach yeah. in college. And the thing is, when you find what a kid is interested in, like with me, at a very young age, I wanted to be a cetacean biologist. I was really into dolphins and whales. I, If you had set me on a path where I could have focused all my math, all my reading, all my science, you know, everything on the ocean and dolphins and things like that, I probably would have become that thing. And And there is a school in Seattle. I hope it's still there. I doubt it is, but... It's an aviation school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, these kids that have a an interest in learning about airplanes and, and space, all of the curriculum is based around that. So it's kind of a holistic approach. We should be able to do that for all our kids. Mm-hmm. But instead, we imprison them, make them sit in rows, make them learn dry, boring garbage, and then wonder why they're acting out all the time. Yeah. And now we're doing all the rainbow crap and the, you know, mom, two moms and chopping off your genitals. And it's like, we have, we have lost the plot with our kids. Oh, big time. We have lost the plot. Speaking of losing the plot, I think Chuck has some things to say. He does indeed. (laughs) So we're going to go ahead and head on into, uh, holy crap. (laughs) It's been. And this has been really holy crap Quite a week, week. Yeah. And uh, then we'll come back, say a couple more things, and head on into our interview. Sound good? Sounds great. Let's do this. And now, CCW News presents Holy Crap, This Is Actually Happening, Sideshows, Airbags, and Missteps Edition, May 20th, 2024. I'm Chuck U. Farley. The big news this week is the release of the Durham Report, which ruined Rachel Maddow's day. The long-awaited report that frankly took so long we forgot about just confirmed what we knew from the beginning. The Obama-Biden-Clinton cabal colluded with the wholly corrupt FBI to defame Trump with completely fabricated Russian nonsense because they were afraid he might expose the fact that the FBI was colluding with the DNC. The FBI responded by saying, Oopsie doodle, my bad, won't happen again, carry on. The Bureau then retired the word treason and replaced it with missteps with the full support of the state-run media. I swear, I am not making this up. Carl Bernstein, who gets paid to call anything more serious than a stub toe worse than Watergate, has been notably silent about this actual multi-level conspiracy that makes Watergate look like a kiddie pool. In further exonerating Trump news, after finding President Trump innocent of E. Jean Fruit Loops McGee's charges, which she literally plagiarized from an episode of Law & Order, the jury did find him guilty of agreeing with them that she's lying and ordered him to pay her $5 million for defaming her by saying he didn't do what the jury agreed he didn't do. I swear, I am not making this up. Remember, this woman is on video saying rape is sexy and telling jokes about it. No, I'm not making this up either. The jury then held themselves in contempt of court for agreeing with themselves and charged Trump another $1.5 million for being right again. Trump then went on to a town hall hosted by CNN where we would love to report on what he said, but predictably, Caitlin Collins wouldn't shut up long enough for the man to get a full sentence out. During the 60-minute town hall, she interrupted him no fewer than 101 times. She continually tried to fact-check him with rhetoric that couldn't pass a quick fact-check and badgered him until he finally said she was a nasty person, which she is. Given precedent, Collins plans to file a lawsuit in New York City against Trump where she'll be awarded several million dollars for being so completely humiliated by her own incompetence. On the topic of blowhards, experts cite that 6.8 million vehicles from manufacturers like Chevy, Ford, Porsche, Hyundai and Kia may have faulty airbags from manufacturer ARC. The airbags are known to explode with the velocity of a hand grenade, sending metal shrapnel throughout the cabin and have already killed two motorists. 
Much like Congress, these airbags literally perform only the opposite of their single job. ARC denies the allegations and has made no plans for a massive recall, despite calls to do so from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Consumers are calling for other dangerous airbags to be added to the recall list, including Joy Reid, Rachel Maddow, and Keith Olbermann. Speaking of shrapnel, the wholly corrupt military-industrial complex, which believes that taxpayers are so stupid they can't recognize their shenanigans, says they discovered an accounting error in one of their multi-billion dollar handouts to Ukraine. In layman's terms, the three billion dollars of our weapons and war vehicles were listed at replacement value, the proper and global accounting practice, so they fixed it by instead listing them at cost, which they assert freed up more of our tax dollars to fund their war in Ukraine. This, they say, is something to celebrate, even though we, the taxpayers, will still have to pay current replacement value to replace all of our forcibly donated equipment, as well as the extra money they, uh, <clears throat> freed up. In other war games, the UK's National Crime Agency has arrested a man for using 3D printers to create an arsenal. The operation used the printers to create parts that turn blank firing guns into deadly weapons, a common process in the states known as Baldwinning. New York Congressman George Santos is rightly under fire from his own Republican Party because he lied about his college degree, lied about his past jobs, lied about his real estate investments, lied about his genealogy, and defrauded voters by laundering money through his fake businesses. He's also oddly under fire from the Democrats, the party wholly behind Joe Biden, who lied about his college degree, lied about his past jobs, lied about his real estate investments, lied about his genealogy, and is still defrauding voters by laundering money through his family, fake businesses, and proxy wars. Speaking of ridiculous sideshows, that's the exact moniker the lapdog press has given the surge of destruction, looting, and violence in Oakland. The California Bay City, which proudly defunded the police in the midst of record-breaking street violence, is getting exactly what they paid for. Meanwhile, on the rainbow side of crazy, the group that is totally not composed of violently insane groomers offers what they call Build a Queer Kits to children, which include gay literature, condoms, makeup, chest binders, tucking tape, prosthetic penises, and for unknown reasons, cute socks. The site offers tips for how to hide your purchase from your parents, as well as a program to help pay for private flights with volunteer pilots so that children may go to a state willing to mutilate their genitals and addict them to a lifetime of expensive hormones. Good God, I wish I were making this up. For CCW News, this has been holy crap. This is actually happening. I am Chuck U. Farley. Good night, and may God help us. Get it. Your parents were jerks and you're traumatized. But that doesn't mean you should use your lousy childhood as an excuse to be a lousy adult. Stop being such a whiner and get past your past already. Bye, get over it and get started. The book by Melanie Hope that will get you out of your self-imposed failure and on the road to greatness. Available in paperback, Kindle, and Nook. In a land filled with deception, corruption, and the slow but steady erosion of constitutional freedom, one jackass, a uh, Democrat, stands head and shoulders above the rest. Coming soon to a state near you, Robert Francis O'Rourke is the Mexican. That's Beto. I mean, uh... <clears throat> That's Beto to you, senor. He is unafraid to show his true colors, whatever they are at a given moment. For too many years, rich white men have run this country. Vote for me, and I promise I will... Now wait a dang minute. Ain't you a rich white man? Uh, <clears throat> you must have mistaken me with some gringo, senor. Unafraid to tackle the numbers, even when they don't add up. Well, Max, if we do not change our consumerist, wasteful habits, life as we know it will come to an end in ten years. 
But good sir, this timeline is being debunked by the very scientists who believe in climate change. Well, uh... <clears throat> Are you saying I am telling a lie? That is very racist of you. Unafraid to tackle you. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15s and AK-47s. But sir, how are you going to confiscate millions of firearms without due process and without straining government resources? Well, uh... Trump's border policy is tearing families apart and white people like you think it's all right. Shame on you, gringo. Fear has a new name, and so does Robert Francis O'Rourke, the Mexican, coming soon to a Democratic debate near you. Leaders, listen up. Do you feel like you can't get a dang thing done because of all the namsy pamsy crybabies that want you to coddle their creativity? When you give orders, are you met with vacant stares only rivaled by a cocker spaniel? It's not them. It's you. You need to shape up or they'll ship you out. Read the Sniper's Guide to Leadership and you'll become a more effective leader, communicator, and motivator. Forget smart goals and learn swift goals. Get the Sniper's Guide to Leadership in paperback, Kindle, and Nook. Today! This show is brought to you in part by Pelosi Gourmet Ice Cream. Pelosi Ice Cream is as yummy as being third in line for the presidency and as cold as one of Nancy's glares. Try all the great flavors in our lineup. Left Wing Lime, Power Mad Praline, Loose Denture Licorice, Vodka on the Rocky Road, Bad Orange Man Sherbet, Blowout Berry, and our brand new taste combo sensation, In Peach Mint. Whether you store it in your $25,000 freezer or lug it in your cooler as you walk aimlessly down Lombard Street while trying to avoid human feces, you'll love Pelosi Gourmet Ice Cream. Available at an overpriced upscale grocery store near you. Traveling shouldn't be a bore. It should be a chore. And at Dispirited Airlines, we will give you a fully modern flying experience that even the TSA envies. To keep our super low fares in the gutter, you can fully customize your experience by paying for endless extras. Carry on? No problem. We charge by the ounce for our convenience. Checked bags? No problem. <laughs> we don't check anything. Seat? You can't fly without one or the fee that comes with it. Air masks? Window shades? Vents? All yours for the asking and a low fee just below your ticket price. Pillow? Peanuts or water? 1950 called and wants its expectations back. You won't find such nonsense on Dispirited. We are a modern airline. As soon as you clean up after the previous occupant, you'll enjoy all the modern conveniences of a storage pocket and, on flights over two hours, a free reading light. Upgrade to our super deluxe seating package that includes cushions and armrests and is even bolted to the fuselage for your added safety. Another hallmark of our airline is our truly unique approach to customer service, meaning we don't offer any. At Dispirited, we treat you just like family. Get a truly 21st century family experience from our dour, ticked off, overworked and underpaid flight attendants, counter agents and flight crews. We might even start arguing with you and asking about your failed marriage, your dead end job or your weight. Just to remind you why you have to fly Dispirited in the first place, you cheap loser. For a travel experience you'll never forget, although Lord knows you will try, call us today at 1-800-DISPIRITED or book online at please for the love of God don't cancel my flight again dot com. Dispirited Airlines, third world service with first world fees. Hi 
everybody. This is Fritzina Fluffybottom. Did you know that we have a subscribe star? We do! There are lots of fabulous extra things on there that you can't get anywhere else, like outtakes, new books, and extra videos. And you can sign up for as little as one dollar. Our entire show is funded by you, our loyal viewers. Please make sure you sign up today so that Mommy and Daddy can get me shiny new bells for my collar, extra feathery toys, yummy crumbly cat food bowls made just for kitty cats, more cow pillows for my couch, name brand albacore tuna, my own pink cat food. If you're stuck in a dead-end life and not sure how to get unstuck, then today's guest might just be able to help you get out of your own way, put yourself out there, and become who you want to be. Please give a counterculture-wise welcome to self-development coach, motivational speaker, and founder of Envision Results, Marnie Moore. Yay! All right, Marnie, let's start off by you telling our listeners how they can find you on the interwebs. I talk to everybody through Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and everything is at Envision Results. Very easy. The same Very easy everywhere. to find. Good name. All right. What kind of oh, things do you post on Instagram? I love Insta. I, I, we do mostly cat pictures. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's an amazing number of cat videos and cat pictures on the internet, but um, the stuff I post on there is stuff to maybe help you think about how to get through a problem or why you might be stuck or something that might be motivational or inspirational. Okay. Um, awesome. So if yeah. you want a little dose of inspiration, head yeah. on over to Marnie's Insta at Envision Results. All right. Well, let's just start right at the top. Uh, you were an executive assistant uh, for many years and yeah. there's a whole story behind how you went from doing that to doing what you do now. So go ahead and tell us the story. Thank you so much. So I like Melanie, you said that I was an, an executive assistant for a lot of years at a very good company. I had a very good job and I was very bored out of my mind because I wasn't growing. There was no promotion opportunity and I, I just was stuck and I didn't know how to move. And um, I needed help. I just didn't know what it meant to, I didn't know how to get a different job. I didn't know how to get a promotion. I didn't know how to change the job that I was in. And so I needed somebody to help me. And so one day on a whim, sitting at my desk at work, cruising Facebook, I hired a personal coach. Wait, you had a job where they let you cruise Facebook? <laughs> you know, when you're bored out of your mind and you're sitting in an office all by yourself, you do what you want to do. You know? yeah. The work was getting done. I just, it was, uh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so that's what I did. Well, I after 10 my... years, it was so easy. You could probably do it yeah. in your sleep. Yeah. After 10 years, I could stay home on the days that I wanted to. It was a really good job, but I wasn't going anywhere. And I really, really needed something new to do and something more because I quit growing. And if you're not advancing, you're retreating. If you're not growing, you're dying. And that's oh. true for every relationship that's in the true. world, whether it's you and you or you and a partner or you, a job, if you're not growing, you're dying. And so I needed something new to do. I hired a coach and she said, you know, we can get you out of this rut. And the first thing we're going to do is just talk to you about you. And you're going to have to come to terms with the idea that you want something more to do. And we're going to start moving you toward that. And so um, I stumbled through this whole program and I went, oh my God, this was stuff that I should have known, but I didn't. And when I realized it was okay not to know, and I could ask for help from somebody else, then everything became so much simpler. And as I went along, it was like, you know what? I think I could do this better or at least differently. And so that's what I started doing. I started working with people one by one to help them get out of their own way, to get something done, to be the person that they really wanted to be so that they could find that ease and flow and something interesting and a reason to get up in the morning as opposed to sucking their thumb and crying in a corner <laughs> oh and offline before we started in in the I, I call it pre-op but i'm sure that's not what it's called you you briefly mentioned how you came to the discovery that all these people saying that they did it themselves oh, yeah. i mean self-help yeah. is like a huge section in the bookstore and, and you learned a little differently i did i did um everyone feels like they should be able to read a book and do the job or you know, they ought to be creative enough to solve their own problems. You know what? And if I meant to do that, I will know how to take care of it automatically. And the truth of it is, is you don't. You don't know what you don't know. 
and you need help. There's no prize for being a solopreneur. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody has, who has created anything of significance in this world has not done it alone. They have hired a team. They have brought people to them to help them make it to the next step and the next step and the next step. That's the way you get it done. You just admit to yourself, one, you need help. Two, so you is don't it, know. Isn't that funny how it takes a certain amount of humility mm -hmm. to boost your confidence? It seems so counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. is, is that like the number one thing you really have to, to break your clients through? Yeah. Um, at the point that they're willing to talk to me, they're just about there. They just need that push over the top mm -hmm. to say, yep, we can do this. I went to an investment conference not too long ago, and there was a woman there. She's a nurse, a palliative care nurse, a nursing home, palliative mm -hmm. care nurse. And um, she I'm glad is... you said nursing home because I immediately thought dinosaurs. <laughs> Well, I guess that's almost the same thing. Oh, very, it. very close. Yeah, wow. palliative care. And so that anyway, I know her and she and I have connected a few times and um, there was 150 people at this conference and she did not like me talking about what it is that I'm doing now. And so she looked right at me and she said, we don't need you here. What? All of us are very successful the way we are. We don't need you. You know, the minute you start telling somebody that you don't need them, that's probably when you do. <laughs> don't you think? Yeah. I was like, wow, that's a really big statement for 150 people you don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> thanks, yeah. For the, thanks for the feedback there, girlfriend. Anyway. Wow. I, yeah. Once you figure out. That so how's she doing? Is she like super duper successful and doing fantastic? <laughs> are, are we seeing her on the news? Is she uh, making <laughs> records? I'm, I'm assuming on the news. She could use some help in a lot of areas, yeah. but, um, you, you, but I, you can't, you, you know, you can lead a horse to water. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. You know, she could use some physical fitness. She could use some TLC. She could use some general self-love. So she funnels all of her energy into um, investing. And that's mm -hmm. all that she focuses on. The kids, the husband, she's oh. tired, her physical fitness her diet and exercise, it, everything goes into this. And she doesn't have a holistic view of her life, which is why she's unhappy. Yeah, she's got this angry chip on her shoulder and she's one of those people that feels like she should be able to read a book and conquer the world. And she can't, most of us can't. We need some sort of accountability. We need somebody to talk us through the stuff that we don't know. I, I'm here to tell you, you don't know what you don't know. No, and that's so true. Right. Working with other people, you are never gonna learn more than that. That's true. I, I actually want to talk a little bit more about this concept of uh, accountability. I, I was, you know, perusing your your website and, and, and your uh, Facebook, and you mentioned connecting with women who are looking for support and accountability, specifically women. Mm -hmm. And accountability, it, it's it, it just seems so rare these days. In fact, victimhood is so in vogue that personal accountability is almost a swear word. Yeah. So I'm wondering how you navigate that field with your clients, because it, like, like we were just saying, it, it takes a certain amount of humility in order to be able to ask for help. Yeah. Um, accountability is that thing where I'm right behind you. When I was um, in my teen years or my 20s and I had a roommate, I noticed that I could conquer the world. I could do anything if I had a wingman. Mm -hmm. So I'm your wingman. Um, 2 a.m., if I wanted to bake a cake, she was getting out of bed too. And we were going go to the, go to the grocery store, get what we needed, and bake the cake. If I needed to talk to Who a stranger. Who bakes a cake at 2 a.m.? <laughs> You're missing out on a whole bunch of stuff. Did you see what I made for dinner? I'm shopping at two in the morning. <laughs> Did you see what I made for dinner? Oh, that's right. You told me you made cookies for dinner. Skinny oh, people. Uh, anyway. I, I think I gained weight just listening to you talk about your cookie. They're really good. I could tell I you they are. It's really, really good. Anyway, um, what I noticed is that I could do anything if I knew that somebody was behind me. Mm -hmm. that's the accountability. If I knew that somebody was going to ask me, so how'd that go? And why didn't it go? That was the accountability. It's like going to college and never going to class. You know what? You need somebody to say, I want to see that you did the work. I want to know that you've applied what it is that you've learned. Mm -hmm. And when you can start applying what it is you've learned and you start getting the practice of doing it again and again and again, that's when everything gets easier. Everything in life is practice folks. Breathing, eating, pooping, tying your shoe, running, walking. Yeah, yeah. Making a decision, getting something done, going to work every day, putting your clothes on every day. 
It's all practice and it's all habit. So let's take advantage of that and reprogram yourself to do the things that you want to do and be the person that you want to be so that you can accomplish everything that you ever thought you wanted to do. That's the accountability. For years, I did um, uh, direct sales, skincare and cosmetics, uh, makeup, uh, skincare I and cosmetics. Stink, and stink, 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 stink at that. So that, that is a special field that I. I wasn't do good at it either, yeah. but I couldn't ask for the sale. I have learned to do that since, by the way, because everything is about sales. You know, if you want a job, you're going to have to say, I'd really like to work for you. I think I'm the best person for you. And this right. is why. That's what you do. You meet somebody. Hi, I'm the person you want to know because I'm funny and I've got this going or that going. That's it's all sales. So if you just think about what's the problem you're trying to solve, then you can get there. OK, that said, direct sales was really easy. I had somebody that took me to their party. I saw exactly what they did. They told me to go do this. We would do it together. And then they would come with me to my parties until I was ready to do it on my own. I had accountability. When I hired my coach, she gave me a done for you pro program and said, call me if you get stuck. And That's was, not coaching. That's not coaching. It's not. And I like this woman. And so I've stayed connected with her and I, you know, I had the opportunity to call her once a week. I'd make an appointment to call her once a week, but it wasn't the consistency that I needed. And I wasn't disciplined enough to seek out that consistency. So a lot of failure, a lot of falling on my face, skin, knees, tears, blood, sweat, and tears, all those things. I finally figured out that that's what I needed was that accountability. And so I'm the person that women who were like, I'm just really not sure what I'm going to do here. I really don't know what to do. I've got a whole life around me and I just can't let that go because somebody might think I'm not doing something for them. And this is a female thing. So Jim, bear with me for a moment. I'm um, just enjoying, I, I, want, I want insight. Jim's often more of a girl I than I, I am. I, when it comes to like shopping or you know things like that, he's way more of a girl than I am. So it's kind of funny how often our roles are reversed. Well, really. still, I, I'm, I'm going to learn something today, so. <laughs> And it's probably it best hurt. that for once I keep my big yap yeah. shut anyway. So. <laughs> well, jump in and ask questions. Jump right in. Of course, of course, of course. I, I don't lose. I mean, Jim, Jim is another example of someone who pursued his dream and, and completely stepped outside of what he was doing before. I mean, we packed up and moved to Vegas, and he ended up on stage in Vegas. I mean, he was spinning his wheels in Seattle, and, and then he was performing on stage and film in Vegas, and then, of course, Corona took all that away, but... You know, he he did it. He got out there. But um, like you, you said, they're they're at that point where they're just at the precipice and you just need to shove them. And that's what I did with him. I said, yeah. we're moving to Vegas. He's like, OK. <laughs> I know. So, you know what? Sometimes it's the shove. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. the best things come out of the worst things. Right. Yeah. You get right. your heart broken and you finally realize that what you what it is you need to do. Yeah. So um, what were they talking about? These women needing accountability accountability partners and coaching. So you had yeah. a coach that basically said, yeah. here's the book, knock yourself out. Yeah. It Which anybody can do. You, I can you could have gone to Barnes and Noble, Noble and done right that. Now, not <laughs> just about, <laughs> just about. And grab so a book and yeah. Right. Yeah. And so what, you know, to be fair, you know, I had video programs and there was a weekly, um, there was like a weekly group call, but there was nobody just keeping me moving forward. Nobody mm -hmm. that was really holding me accountable except me. And I didn't have the discipline and I didn't have the habit to do it. So I had to make a lot of mistakes until I finally realized this is what I need. I need accountability. I need somebody who's back there going, move, get it done. Why didn't you do it? I want to know what your problem is. And in that conversation of why didn't you do what you said you were going to do, that's where you come up with your self-discovery. That's mm -hmm. when you start really becoming aware of who you are, what you really want, and listening to the voices in your head. Yes, folks, I want you to listen to the voices in your head. And the nice ones, not the ones telling you you're a dismal failure and you're fat and stupid and your mother dresses you funny, but the one that's saying, okay, stop procrastinating drinking and get something done. Right. It's tough love. Right. It's tough it love is. is what it is. And it's difficult. You know, mm. oh, and then women have this thing. This is where I was going until I started talking to Jim. Okay, women have this thing that we are raised, or maybe it's genetic, or maybe it's in our anthropological history, who knows, 
that we are supposed to be taking care of everybody out here. We're supposed to be doing all this and we're supposed to take a back seat. We're not supposed to be out front. We're supposed to make sure that everybody else is taken care of and taken care of and taken care of. And if we do anything that brings the light on us, oh my God, we are being conceited. We're being demanded. We're too showy. And somebody is going to be let down because after all, we're just supposed to take care of everybody else. Or you don't get that judgment and like literally everything falls apart because yeah. you're not hyper focused on taking care of everybody around you. It's either or. Yeah. Yeah. Or you're called pushy or bossy oh, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And yeah. we gotta I, get to the point as 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 sisters, we gotta get to the point where somebody calls you pushy or bossy, you say, Thanks, moving on. Got this one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Step aside, girlfriend, because I'm coming through and I'm wearing yeah. my heels. So move. <laughs> no, um, I'm barefoot. Get out of my way. I'll walk right over the top of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. So when women um, finally get to that point where they're like, you know, it's something's got to give. The first thing that we have to tackle is life. Your kids are going to be fine. Your husband's going to be fine. Your partner's going to be fine. The house is going to be fine. You're going to start doing the things that you want to do. And when you start doing the things that you want to do, this is when you get that magical thing called the law of attraction and manifestation. And I want to say those things very carefully. Some people get twisty over them and other people are happy as a clam to embrace those phrases. But when you start doing the thing that you want to do because it makes you feel good and it makes you feel fulfilled and you're moving towards something that you actually want, it's not as if you're working, you're doing the thing that you want and everything starts coming to you. That is ease and flow. When you're getting up every morning and going, you know what? I am doing the thing I want to be doing. Whether it's going to a corporate job, taking care of the kids, or starting a new business, I don't care. But what's the thing that you're thinking about all the time that makes your heart sing? Mm -hmm. That's the thing what, that you're What feeds to. you? What feeds your soul? Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think so many exactly. people are, I mean, I don't want to go into religion or anything. I don't know where right. you stand on that. But what I've noticed are people are, are trying to compensate for that god size hole with all these other things you know the mm -hmm. sex and the drinking and all the crazy mm -hmm. stuff and it's like okay but you're still not happy you're saying right. oh this is where i find my happiness and dye my hair blue and piercing things and sleeping <laughs> with anything that moves and it's like but you're still not happy you've got creativity you've got intelligence you've got relationships there's so many other things that you can focus on so how in our society that is all about instant gratification and yeah. We've gotten a little bit hedonistic as far as people's pursuits and what they think makes them happy. Mm -hmm. How do you steer people in the right direction? I mean, at some point you've got to say, no, hunt, your your polyamorous, you know, drunken state is not making you happy. Plus, you're not building anything. You're not learning anything. Yeah. Are there, you know, come to Jesus moments that you've had to have with any of your, yeah. your clients where yeah. you just say this isn't doing it for you? Yeah. You know, what do you really want? And, and, and what happens in that moment? Do they smack you? Do they give up on you? Or, I mean. A couple have given up yeah. because they've gotten their feelings hurt. And I respect that. Um, I don't. Bunch of I, babies. Well, Get over I, yourself. <laughs> I am, I'm a, you know, I can be a pretty strong force to be reckoned with. And so I got to remember to shut my mouth when I need to shut my mouth and just let people do. Nine times out of 10, if you can start the conversation and get somebody just to start thinking about thinking and being and the little voice in their head, they can pretty much get there on their own. Sometimes though, you gotta call a halt to it and say, look, this is not working. You have got to get focused on one thing and one thing only. And the thing that you need to be focused on is you. And a lot of people take that as, well, I should be able to do anything I want and my life is always gonna be happy and nothing's ever gonna be sad. No, it's there not is how life works. Mm -hmm. I beg your pardon? That's not how life works. It life simply is isn't. Not. And they need to know that they're going to be up and down. And you have to experience emotions. A lot of people don't want to experience sadness and loneliness and tired and anxiety. But when you can go, okay, this doesn't feel good, but you know what? I got my feelings hurt. I really wish the situation had gone this way. <sighs> Moving on. You have gained a new skill. You've mm -hmm. started dealing with your emotions mm -hmm. and you can start moving toward the thing that you really want. One of the things that I ask people to do is just start moving, just start doing something different. Let's yes. just put this thing that seems to be in the way and start doing something different. Take an art class, go for a run, go for a walk, join a gym. Yes, you can work out at home, but I want you to join a gym. 
and meet go people. people, meet network. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We have and lost the ability to do that and COVID made it worse. It did. It did. Well, it's I, so uh, easy to just get on Facebook and yeah. I mean, even, even just places like, like church or, or Toastmasters or the Eagles or Elks or, you know, whatever, it's like people don't meet in person anymore. And, and we need that as a society. Yeah. We need that so much. Yeah. And, and folks have got to relearn. It's like they got to come out of the cave and wipe the sleep out of their eyes and, and look around and touch grass. Oh my God. <laughs> I have a right? question, and I, I'm not sure if – I'm not even sure if it 100 percent relates to what you're talking about. But there are a lot of people who have a base belief that they have to look out for other people and pay no attention at all to themselves because to do so is ungodly or yeah. un. Yeah. yeah, or you know, I don't want to use the word unchristian, but that's that's or what occurs to me as a Christian. You know, that's wanna, that's what occurs to me. As women, we want to take care, and, and it yeah. is innate. It is part of our, yeah. our our psyche, but it's also a little bit societal. Mm-hmm. And it seems to me like it never, we never find a balance. It's either I am one hundred percent codependent, taking care of everybody all the time, and not meeting my needs at all, or mm-hmm. I'm an absolute witch who hates everybody, and I only care about myself. And neither side of that, you're happy. Neither right. side of that, you're happy. Right. And I mean, I know it's a cliche, but the oxygen mask principle, mm-hmm. you've got to take care of yourself first mm-hmm. or you're no good to anybody else. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why that's so hard for people to understand. Yeah. Because and even knowing that, I yeah. don't do it. If we're taking care of ourselves. We're being selfish and we're ignoring other people. And what right. is, who's going to take care of my kids? Okay. So this is what I tell everybody. What if you led by example? What if you did for you and treated yourself the way you expect other people to treat you? What if you took care of yourself and in a way that showed other people that you have respect for you and you expect re- you expect respect in return? Isn't it Eleanor Roosevelt who said you teach people how to treat you? I think that's right. Yeah. I think and you're she right. Also said yeah. You have to do the thing that you you have to do the thing that you fear. Yes. And that's true. You have got to stand mm-hmm. up for yourself. You've got to be the one that shows other people how to treat you. So what if you started knocking it out of the park and instead of being a full-time mom at home making peanut butter and jelly, nothing wrong with that. I eat a lot of PB and J. Why not hire a nanny part-time and give somebody a job, give your kids a chance to interact with somebody else so that, by the way, they learn how to be polite to someone else. Mm-hmm. And you continue to build your legacy. I like the part-time yeah. idea because mm-hmm. when I think of a nanny, I, I think of a mom just not being involved in their kid's life and, no. and kids need that so desperately. But the part-time thing, that works for me because then you get your space, they get their space. And like you said, they learn to interact or, you know, play groups or, you know, uh, or you can day that. camps or whatever. But I find that so many parents just toss their kids in preschool and forget about them. Like they, you know, it, mm-hmm. there's got to be a balance. So what I about that. hiring a housekeeper and getting well, if some I help? could, <laughs> I know, but I mean, that's just it. Why not lead by example and hire a housekeeper, give somebody the opportunity to have a job while you focus on the thing that makes your heart sing. Why not do that? There's nothing wrong with it. You're giving somebody else a job, but you're leading by example. You're showing your kids, your family, your friends, that this is how you manage your life. Mm-hmm. Rachel Hollis is an author, a blogger, an Instagram famous person. And she caught a lot of flack when her followers, her millions of followers, figured out that she had a nanny and a housekeeper and a gardener to manage this $3 million empire, or $2 million empire, whatever it was. And she got you flack for it. You $3 million in empire. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, she needs the time to do the thing that she's really good at. And that's build this empire. She She's home every night. She cooks dinner for the kids or she pulls out whatever the personal chef put in the fridge. She cooks it. They sit down together. They're still having family time. She takes her son to karate. And she, while he's practicing, she's on her laptop going through her email. She's multitasking because she can sit there and stare at him or she can do this too. He has mom. She's part of it. And yet she caught a lot of flack. And I thought, you know what? God bless her. 
She is making yeah. making you know waves. What? She's making something. She's she's making something of herself. She's doing good for the world, and she's still taking care of her family. And she's yeah. probably catching flack from people who let the government raise their children. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I'm not going to touch that one. But <laughs> perhaps you know, school is one of those things. There are a lot of parents that need the help. I get that. Um, but she. But why not bring these people into your team? This is right. creating the team. All right. the people that help you get stuff done is part of your team. Maybe it's your mom. Maybe your mom is living two doors down and she can help you with the kids. That's great. So how is that any different than hiring a nanny? Oh, do tell me. Right. Yeah. Right? I mean, my, my grandmother had a huge influence on my life. I don't know how, if I would have even turned out sane without my grandmother. And and I, I, I it saddens me to see society that has turned away from their elders and, and don't get the full family experience. And, I mean, there's, there's single moms and, you know, every time a friend of ours moves away and it's like, I'm going to miss you and everything, but they tell me they're moving away to be with their grandchildren. My heart just skips a beat. It's like, that's how it's done. That's exactly. how we do that. Yeah. You know, and it's been happening a lot lately with a lot of our friends. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think yeah. folks yeah. are starting to, to really realize this is more important than anything else is family relationships, taking care of yourself. Mm-hmm. And and I, I think we're we're starting very slowly steer back toward that. Um, so yeah, the, the balance. How do you balance being gentle enough with your clients, but still bold enough to, to kick them in the booty when they need it? I mean, does it feel like you're walking on eggshells or, or are you just like, no, this is the way it's going down? Do you make them uh, sign an agreement before <laughs> saying, okay, you can't sue me I'm for, for, try, this, for over-motivating yeah. you? <laughs> I'm assuming this is not a one-size-fits-all approach. Yeah, it is yeah. it? You know, so all of the coaching that I have done to, to this point has been one-on-one. Mm-hmm. And it has been with uh, people who are familiar with hiring a coach. Okay, mm-hmm. So once you learn that any investment you make in yourself is going to be your very best investment and it's going to pay off tenfold each mm-hmm. and every time. Um, then That's it's what I tell Jim every time I get a pedicure. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> it's medical. I call that therapy. Yeah. I call that therapy. Okay, I'm good with that. Yes, yes. <laughs> now, um, so everybody kind of gets their own thing. And uh, before I work with anybody, we, we have a conversation or two. So that they know that one, I'm not uh, a wilting flower. I'm not going to pull my punches too terribly often. And I try my very, very best to just step back and listen. A lot of people just need to be heard. And I was one of those people. So true. Just hear me. Just let me talk and hear me. And don't roll your eyes, look at the ground or stare at I'm actually looking at Jim over my monitor. (laughs) Hear me. Hear Hear me. me validate that I'm speaking something that has some importance and I know it's not important to you, but it is important to me. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. let's, well, let's work with that. You know what? And I believe in you. And I know that you can do this because if you have an inspiration in your heart, God would not have put it there without mm-hmm. giving you the ability to do it. Amen. Yes. It's get there, but you have the ability. So let's get it done. If you have some sort of inspiration in you and you just know that there's something more to do and you're sitting at your desk or at the kitchen counter sobbing and you know that there's something more then you owe it to yourself to do something more and find somebody to help you. And when you hire help and do that, this is where you make quantum leaps. This is where you find the law of attraction. This is where you do that manifestation thing. All of those catchphrases Mm -hmm. that people don't understand when you're doing the thing that you love doing. You don't even know it's work. I mean, Jim, when you were sure. acting and on stage, did you even know that it was work? On a very superficial level, when he was it was learning his work lines at the like. beginning. Yeah. But yeah. when you're yeah. up, when there up there and doing it, it's yeah. like this isn't work. This is ecstasy for me. This yeah. Is, he just glowed. He glowed. Yeah. It's like yeah. I I I want to I want to do it full time all the time. I mean, it's, there's not that kind of opportunity available here, but there's more that I could be doing. Right. But you, but you did something. And right. when you were taking acting classes or comedy mm-hmm. classes and you were investing in yourself, it yeah. wasn't work. No. It was improving your act, no, your it was, trade. It was an investment in myself. And it plus, was. on a side note, half the reason you take these classes isn't to necessarily learn the acting, although that's certainly important, but you also get a chance to network 
every acting gig I got in Vegas was a result of me networking with some of the improv actors Melanie worked with and, and people in my acting class. And that led to 90% of my gigs. You know, it's amazing yeah. how in, in my career, and, and this is something you and I have been batting around for a bit as you were making the change and you started picking my brain, how many other speakers I've run into that would say, oh, I didn't need to join Toastmasters or the National Speaking Association. I've already got that talent and I was doing it all. I was like taking every class I could, talking to every speaker I could, trying to learn as much. I mean, I when I when I found somebody who was successful, I dove under their wings so fast they didn't even know I was there half the time. And I can think of a few names. I like yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yeah. a couple that are, are dearly departed. And you know, the valuable, valuable mm -hmm. advice I got, even secondhand, even when they're like, okay, kid, go, go, go do the thing. And then I look at all the people that, you know, were saying, well, oh, I guess I could take this class, but I'm not really into it. You know, I've been thinking about writing a book. I, I know I can do that. It's like, but they didn't, you know, I've published five books. I've, I've traveled the world. You know, I've, I've been up on big stages. I've gotten, you know, the money that you dream of, you know, I've, I've done all that. And it's not because, I was any more talented than them. In fact, I had a lot more hurdles to overcome. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm not that bright. I'm not that good looking. I'm not small. I don't have a great figure, you know, but I'm creative and, and I'm, and I'm, I'm scrappy. You know, I, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't pay. I've got this fidget thing that I'm playing with. I need to remember to put it down. If I put my hands up, <laughs> Just, I'm, a little mis, I'm a little mis fidgety, but you know, I, I couldn't pay somebody to, to edit my book or, or do my, my cover art or do my website. I had to learn how to do all of that myself. And mm -hmm. a lot of people, that's what stops them. Mm -hmm. Well, if I can't write this minute, hire somebody to do that, then I'm not mm -hmm. going to. It's like, mm -hmm. well, no, you've got to get past that mm -hmm. to where you can hire the gardener and, and the, mm -hmm. the nanny and all of that. And, and then there's no shame in that because that's what you work toward. You know, but until then, you can't say, well, unless I do this. I mean, I've actually met people who were my size and, and, and even smaller who's like, well, I, I can't even think about getting on stage until I lose weight. Well, tell that to Lizzo, okay? Tell that to, tell that to Oprah. You know? Exactly, that, yeah. That's an it's excuse, a lame excuse. You know, it's or lame. I've got everything's got to be perfectly lined up. It's like, no, because the lessons you learn on the way and the things that you overcome on the way is what get you there. And, You're and not so likely to get there me. if you don't have an obstacle yeah. and, and what or not stay there. People use those as an obstacle. excuse not to try. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, so it seems to me like you found that part of yourself where you're like, yeah, I've been sitting here and letting life happen to me. Yeah. And how quick was the switch? I mean, did you walk in and say, take this job and shove it? Or did you oh. build toward it? What did you do? I kept my job as long as possible. But I started making different decisions at my job. So at the time that I was having my breakdown, the company I was working for was going through a merger. Mm. Oh, and that's right. I remember the company you're working for. We won't name them here. Right. So one day <laughs> I got a phone call from the company, another company that we worked with, that big company, it's calling my company. Mm -hmm. And, um, this person said to me, well, who is going to, now that this big change is going to happen, who is going to take care of this? And I said, I am. I didn't ask. There was nobody around. I didn't even think. I just said it out loud. Oh. What do you want? I'm going to do that. And the answer was, that would be awesome. I'd rather work with you than that person. Nice. Fabulous. Right. So I'm going to do that. And then. And you know what? People don't do that in business. They no, don't. They don't. No, they're like, no, who's going to pick this the, up? Everybody's like, they don't take around, the reins. They wait, they wait yeah. for the reins to be handed yeah. to them. Exactly. People don't make decisions. And decision making is a learned skill. You mm -hmm. have to be able to make decisions. You have to be able to say, you know what? I'm going to do this thing. So I just started saying, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I started traveling internationally. I started traveling domestically. I started taking care. I started running meetings. You started and living, I, Marnie. You started I living. So I, I was doing this job and all of a sudden it was kind of like, bang, I got a, you know, a great big uh, hit on my paycheck. That was awesome. And then I got another big hit on my paycheck. And it worked out for the best when I finally said, you know what, I I need to quit being insecure and afraid of what could happen. And I need to start embracing what can happen, what will, what I'm going to create. And you know what? I made a lot of mistakes. I got admonished a few times and you know, when I got admonished, man, I really got admonished and <laughs> it was okay. 
I just took it. It was a learning experience and we're just going to move on. So it was becoming, it was learning to not be so insecure about the what ifs and to just say, fuck it, <laughs> whatever. And we're just going to go. No, there goes YouTube. No, no, no you're fine. You're fine. I so sorry. Anyway, so I just had to learn to do that and it was okay. Um, I found the relationship that I'm in now. This is kind of a big deal. Um, we're supposed to all know what, if we're in love, we automatically know what they want and we're going to be perfect and wonderful and the birds are going to sing and the flowers are going to bloom and no. everything is going to be perfect. And you know what? It doesn't! I mean, it's all screwed up. No. So I, yeah. um, this is the biggest skill that I, the biggest thing that I learned. And so this, I, if you take nothing else from this, this is what I'm going to tell you. Um, ask, <laughs> just ask, do you like Brussels sprouts? Don't assume they do or don't. Just ask the damn question. What side of the bed do you want to sleep on? Just ask the damn question. Oh, true. You know, so true. quit trying to read their mind and don't assume that they're going to read your mind. You're going to just walk up and say, ah, my birthday is in two weeks and I want to go to dinner at this place and I want to have this wine and then we can come home and we can talk about Sons of Anarchy. I don't care, but this is what I get right. for my birthday. Okay, give yes. them a clue. And you know what? When, you, when we're talking about inner men and women relationships, men do not get subtle hints. They don't. No, no. My no. subtle hint is if the water <laughs> bottle needs to be refilled, he wakes up and trips over it on the way to the bathroom. <laughs> if if I I just flat out said, okay, here's what's going to happen. I'm getting an Easter basket and it's going to be awesome. And he rocked the Easter basket, you know, and, and <laughs> I'm, I'm very, exactly. I'm like, Oh, look, it's mother's day. And I was like, so what am I getting for mother's day? <laughs> exactly. I mean, it better flowers. be breakfast or lunch or croissants or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I got, I got tulips. Yay. <laughs> I love and, tulips. and I'm not even a mother. I, I just, right. I'm a dog, dog and cat mom, but uh, it's, right. I, I tell it's him every year we joke. Figure to your students. Yeah, well, that's true. My students. In a way. We we joke. Okay, that's another thing I want to talk about. Is um, so it sounds to me like you built a job that you found fulfillment in as you were making this this journey. Yeah. And if there's one thing I've learned and I've seen in other people is we have this wish, we have this desire, sometimes this goal, and I, I think systems work better than goals. Little Scott Adams thrown in there for you, but. What happens when you are working toward what you think is your ultimate bliss and it turns out it looks completely different than what you envisioned and then you find yourself in a happier place than you ever thought possible? I know this happened to me. If somebody would have told me that I would be learning calculus in my 50s, I would have laughed in their face and, you know, teaching kids from across the nation, I would have thought that they were insane because I don't even like kids and I love what I do. And I just kind of fell face forward into it. So ha I, it sounds to me, it kind of happened to you that way. Have you seen that happen with your clients? Um, the to date, the clients that I've been working with have been on a specific career trajectory and they got stuck, but oh. they were, they continued to move forward. Okay. So uh, there's a woman in Toronto She's an oncology nurse. She needed to quit her present job, quit the current job. She took some time off, stumbled around, had a big cancer scare, Ooh. had to move through that. And so a lot of my work was just to listen to her. She, she didn't need me to tell her what to do. She just needed someone to hear her. That, sound that, cool. that was it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so, but now today, she is, uh, she has a completely different nursing job. She's gone back to walking the floor, but now she has started her own coaching business as a nurse, just working with people in a similar situation that, that need a nurse to help them get to the next place. And that's become her thing. What most people need from a coach is somebody to help them get past the fear of doing the thing that they want to do. Yes. Getting past that insecurity, growing the confidence. I don't care what it is. I don't know. Do you want to spin cotton candy for a living? Do it. <laughs> but what's the thing that's holding you back? Why aren't you living that life now? Let's move forward. So we're going to change. This is those. These are all those little words. You know, we're going to change our energy from being this person 
to being this person. This is the person that you know how to be. This is the person that you see in the mirror. I want you to make a committed decision, and it's not an easy thing to do, that you're going to see just this person in the mirror. And this is what you want to be. And so you're going to start acting like that person right now, right today. And it's going to take some work because it's all unfamiliar. And so you have to rewrite the code that's in your brain to do the thing that you want to do to be the person that you want to be. And that's the bulk of it. I don't care what it is. Let's get past the insecurity. And most people just need to be told that they can do it. Most of us went to school and we learned a whole bunch of stuff, but nobody told us how to apply the information. Right. Or, or so together our different skills. I mean, I think the only reason I'm doing what I'm doing, I have a degree in accounting. I wanted to be a, a, a veterinarian. I, you know, life stuff happened and all these different things. And I have all these different weird skills that I acquired and somehow they all just kind of bunched up and it's like, wait, this works now. Right. And, and recognizing that, have you ever had even either yourself or, or with someone you've worked with where they had that moment where they gave themselves permission because it sounds like that's kind of what we need to do. It's like you were saying that they're stuck and, mm -hmm. and they, they've got to allow themselves to become who they want to be, where they, they actually have that moment where they give themselves permission and it just wrecks them. They just like burst into tears and, and then move on from that. Or do you find that it's a, a slow progression? I haven't had anybody just fall apart like that for sure. Um, I have, but yeah. <laughs> You know, that's between me and my bathroom mirror. Yeah. Um, I can so maybe they that. haven't told you about it. Maybe it's yeah. just on their yeah, own yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. You know, when you make a committed decision to yourself, then everything else becomes easy because now you just do that thing because you no longer are this other person. Uh, so let's pick on smoking. Oh, I've never been a smoker, so it's kind of a yeah, weak, weak description, but we can go with it. So um, a lot of people can understand. I, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. Let's put so, sticks in our face and light them on fire. doesn't sound like fun right, to me, but. Right. So, okay. So you're a smoker and now you've decided you're not going to smoke. So now you've decided that you're not going to smoke. So it's just not even a question. Why would you go light up a cigarette? Because, well, I'm not a smoker. So it just doesn't enter my mind. And that's the point I want you to get to from this thing where you think you have to do it all the time, because that's what you see in your face see in your mind to, you know, I really just don't do that. So I don't even need to think about it. It's just not even in my wheelhouse. I know a woman and I, I will be very careful in this regard. I know a woman who became very, very successful and she was very overweight, very obese. And at the time that she was developing this monumental success, and I mean, monumental success, she was hell bent to be fat. I, she was just going to prove to the world that she was going to be fat. And that and be became successful. her thing. That became her thing. Mm. Until Mother Nature stepped in and said, you're in the hospital for three weeks. And by the way, you're going to lose part of a lung. Ew. So she had to have a heart to heart with herself that she could quit fighting herself and trying to prove to the world and to everyone else that she was going to be fat and successful to be her she could quit battling herself to be fat and just start being the person that was in her mind successful healthy doing living the life that she wants to live inspiring the people that she wants to inspire and when she made that decision the decision was done it was all over she didn't need to fight herself she didn't need to stumble on it she decided to give up drinking she talked about um going out to dinner and everybody else was ordering a cocktail. So she ordered one too. And when it came, she's like, you know what, but I don't drink anymore. I'm a non-drinker. I just don't do that. So I don't need this. The decision was done. And so the fight was over. Is it perfect? No. Are there ups and downs? Absolutely. <laughs> habits are hard to break. And some people you get into a group of people and that's what you all do. Those habits are hard to break. So maybe in this shedding of things, it's like going on a diet. You give up certain foods, you give up certain things, and you give up certain people. It doesn't have to be forever, but it is going to be for a while. So this woman just changed her thought process to, I'm just not a drinker. That's just not who I am. And I go for a walk every morning. And so she takes a walk every morning and she videotapes her feet every morning. And every morning it shows up on Instagram 
she videotapes her feet walking. <laughs> so that, I, know there's, I know there's a whole station for that out there. <laughs> she just, but she's doing the thing. It was no longer a challenge when she quit fighting herself and the decision was done. Did she have some tearful moments? I'm sure of it. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely sure of it. You land your ass and you land in the hospital for three weeks and lose part of a lung. Yeah, that's a big thing. That is a big thing. That's a big thing. But she mm -hmm. made this decision. And when she quit fighting herself and just started allowing herself to be and to embrace who she was in her mind and in her spirit, the rest of it became easier. And she just started moving forward. She's lost a ton of weight. Mm -hmm. She will never be a size five. And it doesn't matter. She looks good. She's healthy. She's mm -hmm. strong. And she's living the life that is in her, within her. She's mm -hmm. being that person. That's what we all need to strive to. Yeah. I don't ask people to come to me with a goal. I ask people oh. to come to me with a desire. A desire. Yeah. For something more. And we can worry about the goal later. But right now, we just need to start changing things and start moving in a new direction. And when you start doing that, your goal is going to start to bubble up and it's going to start to become very evident. What's the thing that you're thinking about all of the time? Because mm -hmm. that's where all of your energy is That's where is you going. start. Exactly. That's what you're going to accomplish. The positive thing that you're thinking about all the time. Yeah. Not the end of the right, world. Right. Not the, no, but, no, no, no. Yeah. What is the thing that just, you, you get up every morning and you go, yeah, that's going to be it. That's going to be it. That's what I'm doing. And the why. I want to make millions of dollars. Okay, that's Okay, that's a good thing, but that might be a by byproduct because what are you going to do with the millions of dollars? Roll right. around in it? And or how many, how many millionaires are miserable? Exactly. They're are out you there. looking to roll around in money? Are you looking for passive income? Are you listing, looking to leave a legacy? Are you wanting to build a park in the neighborhood? Are you wanting to contribute to your local church so that your name lives on? Do you want to leave something for your kids? Do you want to pay for their college education? What is it? Because money just gives you options. Money is just a tool. Mm -hmm. money is nothing more than energy so what's the yes. energy that you want to put out there what's the energy that you want to create mother Teresa didn't have a lot of energy have a lot of money but she had energy she had mm -hmm. influence and power right that yeah still stands yeah. Mm -hmm. a little Hungarian uh, nun yeah people who were starving and yeah said, somebody needs to yeah yeah why not and that took bravery that it that, did oh my god beyond belief you know right Right. You know, she had this guy in, in house, you know, God, and he was her be all end all. And that's the person she put her faith in. And he gave her the courage and the strength to say, I'm behind you. Remember that wingman I talked about a while ago? Uh -huh. Right. Had one. An yeah. amazing wingman. Best you and, can get. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what more do you get, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who's standing next to you? Who's helping you to get through these, these things, you know, ask the questions. It's okay not to know the answers. It's okay to ask for help. Nobody who's created anything of significance has done it alone. Elon Musk does not know how to build a car. Henry Ford didn't know how to build a car. They right. brought people together to be mm -hmm. on their team who could do the thing that they wanted to do. Otherwise the V8 never would have existed. Exactly. <laughs> George Washington wasn't the smartest man in the boat but he was the guy that was charismatic enough to bring smarter people to him mm -hmm. and to organize them to do the thing that he wanted to do. Yeah. You don't have to know everything. And it would be really helpful if you didn't know everything because then you can learn something. I don't know how to do my taxes. I hire that out. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know how to do this thing. I, I bring somebody to me. Masterminding, people are like, oh no, I don't want to work with a group of people. They might steal my ideas. and. I don't know, but you know what? If you're in a group of people, you should be the stupidest one in the room because you want people who are already so successful. They don't want what you have. They want you to catch up to where they are. Exactly. Right. They're going to support you. They're going to bring you forward. This is masterminding folks. Who do you know? Start talking, start taking opportunities. That's what I started doing. That's what I want you to do. Start taking the opportunities that come your way. Right this minute, I'm in this thing where I am saying yes to everything. You know, like that Jim Carrey movie, Say Yes? Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Um, I applied to be in a magazine for 40 Over 40, and she said yes! 
Um, <laughs> I got a, cool. an invitation to apply to the Great American Baking Show. Wow. <laughs> so your cookies are actually taking you places. Wow. My cookies Send are really good. Some. No, wait, I can't do that. Yeah. Well, we'll give you the P.O. box offline. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the Great American Baking Show thing, you know, it was kind of like, oh my gosh, now what do I do? Um, the, you know, joining Toastmasters, joining this networking group or that networking group, you don't have to commit to anything for the rest of your life, but try it for a while. You know, and a lot of people, my mother, this is her big crime. She doesn't join any groups because she might have to do it forever. You don't have to do it forever. But yeah. try it and see what you get out of it. That's, that's it how was, I got my stepson to try different foods because he was his dad was meat <coughs> potatoes and he was chicken nuggets boy. And yeah. I was like, no, you, you don't have to like it, but you've got to try it. And yeah. by the time I was, I only had that kid for a year and he was eating sushi and calamari and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> because I'm like, you don't have to like it. Just try it. He's like, I don't want bubble tea. That sounds gross. I'm like, just try it. You know, yeah. his favorite thing in the whole wide world. And you know, it's the same way with, with jobs. I mean, like I said, if somebody would have told me I was going to be learning calculus in my 50s, I would have laughed in their face. And I tried it and like, okay, don't particularly like trig. Calculus is okay, but now I'm learning physics. And it it's because of my kids. It's because of the motivation and, and, and wanting to be. And that's the other thing that people forget. And every single person you've mentioned so far, when they found their bliss, it wasn't in service of themselves. They took care of themselves. They motivated themselves, but ultimately where they found their joy was in service to others. Every yeah. single person that you've mentioned, your, your coaches, your motivational speakers, yeah. your nurse, everybody. And I think that's the thing that we miss is yes, we have got to take care of ourselves first, yeah. but it's in yeah. service to others that we yeah. find our joy. When you say in service to others, I want to be clear. This is a question I have run into time and time again. It doesn't mean that you are ignoring yourself no. to abject poverty and you it's, are only exactly. waiting on people. Not, not a doormat. To, not a doormat. And that's your the thing. service it's, to it, others is to exactly. lead by example. Exactly. And to give to yourself so that you are so full you can give to others. Exactly. Money has two things, does two things in the world. It gives you options and it gives you the ability to give other people options as well. You can yes. do with it what you want. And when you start treating yourself with respect, other people are going to treat you with respect. Mm -hmm. Oprah says it all the time. People will treat you exactly as you allow them to treat you. So mm -hmm. you better just like step up to that plate and yep. make sure that you are being the person you want to be and you expect to be treated in return. And if somebody wants to call you an old hag or pushy, bossy, whatever it is, move on. That is on them. Yeah. Not on you. Not on you. And and, and always, hard. whenever somebody says something mean or awful about me, I always have to take a step back and think, consider the source. Well, yeah. And it's their mirror. It's they are, what bothers you, them about you is what they see in themselves. Mm -hmm. It's that mirror. And so maybe there's something within them, within them that needs to be adjusted. Yeah. So, and you like, can't do it for them. You can't. On yeah. that note, um, I was reading a book just the other day, Rhonda Burns, The Greatest Secret. And whether you like her or not, she's the one that produced The Secret, the original movie, right. The Secret, which was very motivational, motivational and inspiring to lots and lots of people. Mm -hmm. She's got this follow on book and I've really enjoyed it because she has brought together excerpts from a bunch of other books that are very enlightening. And one of the things that I got out of it not too long ago, and even Chris found it very enlightening. Is if a feeling or an old memory is bubbling up inside of you, that means that your body and your mind are ready to let it go. Oh. So you know those days where you're driving down the road and you see a blue Honda go by and all of a sudden you're ruminating on a time in high school when Sally Smith called you a nasty name and hurt your feelings because she was a mean girl and you cried or you weren't the nicest person that you could have been to the new kid in school. And all of a sudden this is coming to your memory because some spontaneous thing brought it to your attention. Mm -hmm. It means that your mind is ready to let that go. It means that it's time for you to acknowledge that feeling, embrace it, rework it maybe once, maybe twice. You don't get to live there and let it go. And the more practice that you take, that you employ, of acknowledging feelings, 
and letting go, the better you will get at it. And the less mm -hmm. baggage you have to carry around. That's so funny. Just go. yesterday with one of my students, I was telling him, okay, as you start practicing these concepts, because he had math anxiety off the charts, mm -hmm. like, okay, we're, we're going to make this as easy as we can. And I, I said, what's going to happen is you're going to wake up in the middle of the night and go, why did I just have a dream about algebra? And I told him, that's your brain getting it. Yeah. And, and it's perfectly natural. And, and that should be a, a moment of celebration because people struggle against it. Mm -hmm. And I have this whole story. I tell them about riptides and everything growing up in Washington and how if you struggle against, you know, it being pulled out to sea instead of swimming parallel to shore, you'll just get pulled further and further out. But when you relax and swim parallel to shore, I know that's counterintuitive, but eventually you'll get out of the riptide and then you can swim back to shore. Mm -hmm. And and math is the same way and coaching, I'm sure, is the same way. And and pretty much every choice we make, we're struggling against something instead of going with something. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard mindset to get out of. I struggle with it every day, every day. So and I know all. Jim does too. We all yeah. do. We all do. It's the allowing. It's just let it just let it happen. It's okay to have feelings and it's okay to have negative feelings. We don't have to be happy all the time. We have to allow. Well, plus, how would we know we were happy? Go. How would we know we, we were happy if there's contrast no contrast? With. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Okay. Now I want to, I want to back up just a little bit because you were talking about um, wealth and I, I had noticed that you had recently offered a three part, three part course I just brushed my teeth and I can't do a thing with them. A three-part course in wealth confidence. And I was intrigued by that phrase. I was wondering if you could, this this isn't a total dog leg because you did okay. kind of bring up wealth a little bit. Yeah. So what does wealth confidence mean? Because I'm pretty sure I'm really inconfident in that. Oh, <laughs> in that no, no, no. <laughs> I, bet you, I bet you aren't. I bet you aren't and you just don't know it. So let's reframe some of your thoughts. Okay. Let's just take it from a different angle. Coach me harder, mommy. Coach me harder. <laughs> One of the things a coach does is look at something from outside your perspective. Okay. Pete Carroll is the coach of the Seahawks. He's not throwing the ball. He's on the sidelines going, you need to do this and you need to do that because he's looking at it from an outside. Mm -hmm. And he spends 90% of his time making sure that those boys have their head on straight and that they are focused on the end goal, which is the game. That's what, okay, so wealth is the game. It's the end goal. What does that look like to you? I don't care what, what it is. What you see as your wealth is what you need. Is that a relationship? Is that physical fitness? Is it spiritual? Is it monetary? Is it friends and family? What is it that you want to be, to have wealth? What does that look like? And so then we're not just talking money and investment. Oh like gosh, your friend. No, we're talking no, no, wealth no. as in your entire. What is it that inspires you? And you need to take these things like one at a time. Oh, by the way, because you cannot make a complete overhaul of who you are without being totally overwhelmed. One, your brain won't take it. And the only time that that happens is when you receive some sort of an emotional impact. And usually it's a bad day. Remember the woman who was really, really successful because she was really fat. And then Mother Nature knocked her down to her knees, took part of her lung and said, you're going to need to rethink this. She had an emotional impact that really made that decision making super, super simple. Right. Don't you don't need to be there. What you need to do is you need to decide what's really important to you. Is that the relation? Is that the relationship with your partner? I mean, that's very important to me. Chris and I work on our relationship. We like each other. So it's not a lot of work. It's important to both of us. Well, I so like Jim, but boy, he is a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, I, love, I love this though, because I felt like you were giving us permission to focus on one thing at a time. Cause that is not what society tells us. And that's no, not what a lot to, of it you have to work on it's like, you got to do it all at once. once. You got to right. do the diet and do the, the exercise and, and do the, you know, cut this out of your life and focus on this and, and write so many words a day and all of this at once. And, and it seems to me like you said, your brain can't take it. It's overwhelmed. It is. And, uh, I, I love that you give permission to focus on, you know, the one thing that's going to get you to the next step. And then you can, once that's ingrained and that's just natural, right. go to the next step. I, one of my, uh, unfortunately he's, he's gone now, but one of my, my dearest mentors, Mr. John Kindy, um, once said that 
everybody wants to focus on the things that they don't do well, and they try to want to make those better. And they, they want to focus on getting better at the things they don't do well. He said, no, you find the thing that you're best at. And you get better at it until you're so good at it that all the rest of the stuff doesn't matter. Because there's always going to be someone else who's good at that thing that you're not good at. Hiring the team. And there we go. Full (laughs) circle. Back to the nanny. Let's do this. Do it. I I am here but to serve, Marnie. Can you believe we've been talking for an hour already? My goodness, um, you are such a joy, and Very I'm so good. glad that we were able to bring you on our show. You are welcome back anytime. You. I know I you've got that. a lot of irons in the fire. Um, I'm sure there's all kinds of fun things forthcoming, and I would very much like to have you back on the show again. I'd love to. Uh, if you'd be kind enough to repeat all of your details so that our Absolutely. listeners can find you again, we will also have them on our website and um i'm gonna call this a wrap because I, I my brain is full i need to go think on things that you said so Good. this is a lot of fun a lot, a i lot. want you to be motivated i want you to be inspired and i want your listeners to go i can do that yeah i can take this one step at a time that's 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 the goal just start listening to who you want to be in a positive way and start doing that become that person today start acting like the the generous person that you are or start acting like the caring person that you think you want to be or start acting like the baker or the butcher or the candlestick maker whatever that is do that now and do it happily yeah because then the rest of it's so easy okay everybody my name is marnie and you can find me at envision results on instagram facebook and linkedin envision results and i would be more than happy to talk with you about getting your results wasn't she great? She was fantastic. She was amazing. What what a fun Thanks and again, engaging Marnie. interview, was, Marnie. I, I hope you're listening. If not, I hope you catch us on all the other places that we can be found. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? What you forgot to do? Well, at the beginning of the podcast, we typically say whether you're listening live mm-hmm. or you're listening after the fact on... I better put my helmet on for this. You might want to, yes, because okay. I, I know how you get in the way. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you're listening on iHeartRadio or Spotify or uh, all the other ones. I can't think of them all right now. The Squeaky Network. Yeah, Squeak Always got Network. a point, yeah. Drop everything. <laughs> and squeak. squeak. I mean, oh, wait. I mean, mm-hmm. and head to our website, counterculturewise.com. Or... Any of the other places that you can go. Like, share, subscribe, do the nice things. Give us a 2,000-star review. Give us a four-star review, but but make it nice. Do all the things you have to do to spread the news. Bring a friend. Bring an enemy. Bring your kid. Bring your uh, adult parent. Because a lot of us don't have parents who are adults. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway. <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> Just for goodness sake, spread the news. And if you like what we're doing, we could use some help to build our channel. We've given up on YouTube because they hate our ever-loving guts. Even the people who are subscribers are saying, we're not getting notification. We're being buried in the algorithm. So we've given up on YouTube, but we are still doing animations. We're doing spoofs. We're doing parodies. Chuck, of course, gets a video treatment. You can find us on BitChute on Rumble. We'll be on YouTube just to and piss coming them up off. on a couple of others. Just yeah, to but we sure are out there everywhere. So mm-hmm. do all the things: like, share, subscribe, give us stars, whatever. Also, buy our crap. <laughs> Support us. We are we going have some to be amazing products in our shop. Yes, and and we do have some sponsors coming up, including a coffee, 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 and a few other things that'll be coming up. So stay tuned for that. Uh, ways that you can help you help yourself. In fact, there's another one where all you have to do is shop. Right. And and it, it benefits you and it benefits us. And uh, I have one set up for my tutoring company so that if you shop and what you're buying ends up giving back to the tutoring company, I will donate hours for students who may not be able to afford a tutor but need one. So that, that is that is something that, that is obviously is near and dear to my heart. Obviously. Um, and then the other thing, of course, that is near and dear to our hearts is 
animal welfare, yeah. sponsoring pets, making sure they get great homes. And, and veterans organizations. And, of course, veterans. So those are our three big, big ones, education, veterans, and animals. Uh, so we, while we do need to pay the rent and eat and all that good stuff, we also love to be generous whenever we can. Oh, we didn't talk about that um, moment that we had at Black Rifle Coffee. Not a sponsor, but we take them in a heartbeat. That's we, right. We, we went through the drive through This was like last weekend, right? Or was it yeah. yesterday? Yeah. yeah. No, it, I know. It feels like yesterday. No, it was yeah. It was after our show. Mm-hmm. I think it was like a Monday or Tuesday. It was like an okay. odd day. Yeah. So um, we went through the drive through because we were both just dragging, dragging ass. Mm-hmm. and <laughs> wanted some coffee. And uh, we do love their coffee. There's some weird things going on there. I'm not sure what it is, but it, it, we'll worry the about that The bottom line is they do help veterans. And, they do help veterans. And, and, and the coffee and, is good. And the coffee is amazing. So uh, we each ordered a coffee, and when we pulled up to the window, they told us that the car in front of us had paid for our drinks. And we were prepared to spend about 10 bucks on our right. drinks. So we thought that was really cool. So I said, well, great. We'll, we'll just pay for the guy behind us. That was in a giant SUV with dark windows. So as far as we knew, there were 20 people in there. Right, exactly. Or he was ordering for the office. So I actually handed her a $20 bill, expecting it to be a pretty substantial order, mm-hmm. and was expecting to hand her more. And she said, oh, that'll be six ninety five. Is that okay? And I said, that's wonderful. Keep the change. And we drove away. <laughs> So it was a good. Fun. It was a good feeling. Oh my god! It was so fun. We had a blast. Yeah. So, um, oh, it was last Sunday. It was Mother's Day. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. That's yeah. Right. So that was fun, and uh, <laughs> yeah, we had a really good time. It, you know, something that I really love about living in Texas that I never got in Washington and I never got in Nevada, and it happened again today. Mm-hmm. I was leaving a store, and the person at the door said, "Have a blessed day." And it just, I just love that. Yeah. We get to say Merry Christmas. We get to say God bless. We get to say thank you and please and all the things that you just don't get to say anywhere else. Right. And here, they don't even think about it. Have a blessed day. God bless. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's wonderful, and I hope that never changes. We want to always end our show on a high note. So this one is kind of a weird one. Because it's a story that we reported on, I believe, last week or the week before. Yeah. And we, we have a responsibility. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, we, I, I don't want to call us journalists. We're really not. We're not. But, but we also but, don't want to report things. We have news. reported things, yeah. and we've, we found this to be. This turned out to be a hoax. We'll see, but the hoax. good news is it was a hoax. Yeah. <laughs> so we're thrilled to report. That one of the news stories that we did report on in This Is Why We Can't Have Nice Things Mm -hmm. turned out to not be true. And that actually is a good thing. Yes. So um, a news story blaming White House immigration policies for causing more than 20 homeless veterans to be booted from their temporary shelters is actually an elaborate hoax. It did not happen. This is in the city of New York where, sadly... Totally believable that it would have happened, but it turns out that it did not. Um, The fallout from the false report spread much further. The New York suburb, obviously, the case drew national attention. And further political fights over whether the federal government is doing too much to help new immigration. It is, and not enough to help struggling veterans. They aren't. (laughs) <laughs> However, it is nice to, to it see. It is nice this, to report that this didn't yeah, actually happen. Yeah. So this incident began on May 12th when the New York Post, who usually is not bad about this, reported that about 20 veterans staying at a Newburgh, New York hotel had been kicked out by management to make room for incoming migrants being housed through county funding. And, and this is really bizarre. Leaders from the Yerrick Israel Tony Foundation said they had to scramble to find new housing overnight to keep the veterans from ending up back on the street. In response, New York State Assemblyman Brian Mayer, himself a Navy Navy veteran, introduced legislation to prohibit any such harm to veterans. He blamed the failure of the federal government. I'm not seeing a problem with this bill. Right. It's just how it came about. Yeah. He blamed the failure of the federal government to better manage the migrant crisis, as they should, as the reason for the veterans' plight. In an interview with Military Times, 
which is where we're getting the story. So this is legit because they wouldn't report on this if it wasn't. Mayor said he had worked closely with the foundation for years and spoke to several individuals who said they were displaced by the moves. He also had given bank records showing hotel payments by the nonprofit on behalf of the veterans. But as the story was picked up by national media, details began to unravel. Veterans Affairs officials said they had no record of any direct work with the New York charity or any reports of veterans in need of help from local partners. They also said their requests to speak with the veterans were refused by the foundation. On May 17th, the Mid-Hudson News reported that hotel officials had no record of any payments by the Yerrick Israel Tony Foundation or of homeless veterans using their location for temporary housing. And this, um, this didn't recall, the Times should have at least done cursory investigation. It just shows you how bad <laughs> the yeah, world the, of, the old gray lady. Yeah. Just isn't well, there this anymore. this wasn't the New York Times. This was the oh, post. Oh, different times. I believe. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Mayor said they he confirmed a day later that the veterans in questions never existed, and that the incident was made up in a misguided attempt by foundation officials to draw attention to veterans' issues. My heart is broken. He said this looks to have been a complete and elaborate lie. The foundation had a lot of people working on this, and I had trust in them. But in the end, this did not happen. Foundation Executive Director Sharon Finch did not respond, of course. Mayor said he spoke with her on Thursday and she admitted the fraud. He has called for an investigation by the New York State Attorney General into the foundation on... That is one soon-to-be former <sighs> yeah. foundation. On Could Friday, the Mid-Hudson up. News broke... I'm sorry, spoke to seven local homeless veterans who said they were recruited by the foundation to lie about their experiences as part of the scheme. Folks, there is enough abysmal treatment that is really happening going on. We don't need to make things up, okay? Just shine a light on what is actually happening. Do not make things up because it just dims that light right and points and, it away and from where on it behalf to be of counterculture wise i am sorry we reported this news because well like i said we we, we just we operated on what the on what we had well the they time. were so called quote unquote legitimate sources and, right right um you're not going to see this correction i mean i found this on the military times mm -hmm. i'm not finding this on the New York Times. I'm not finding this in the Post. I'm not finding this anywhere else. So we would like to go on record, first of all, apologizing. We obviously are not reporters, so we right. didn't have the ability to do the due diligence that they should have done. But we are more than happy to correct the record on our behalf, at least, and uh, we put it here in News of the Wonder Fuller because it is indeed good news that this did not happen. So going forward, <laughs> we love our vets. We will take care of you the best way we know how. We contribute to charities whenever we have the ability. I mean, <laughs> Jim himself has been a homeless vet <laughs> Yeah, it, it, a couple of you times. You know something? I've had more fun in my life. Let's put it that way. <laughs> And um, that, is, that is something that is near and dear to our hearts. So we are blessed that this did turn out to be false. I'll be honest, I don't want to believe bad stories. And that's something that really bothers me on social media is that people will fight to try to hold on to terrible stories about especially Trump, right, they right. want it to be true so bad. It's like, well, why? Why do you want that to be yeah, true? It's, Wouldn't it's you rather say, that's horrible, I hope it's not? Right. And, and you know, that that's kind of where we are. It's like, it's horrible, I hope that's not true. It's right. being reported as true, that's what we have to go on. I am thrilled this wasn't true. Right, I am too, I am too. Just like it's I would It's shameful be, how they acted, though, it really yeah. is. And just like I would be thrilled to find out that, you know, the current president isn't a senile old child sniffer that, you know, has his son selling the country to China. I would I would be over the moon if 
I would have learned that that wasn't true, unfortunately. Yeah. We <laughs> are where that, we are. Yeah, we are where we are. Just like I would be thrilled to find out that the FBI wasn't totally compromised and, and protecting him while poor, trying to I, bury I think somebody. Poor Agent Orange is in for some <sighs> major misadventures I heard he, in the very I heard future. he did get a new assignment, so we'll yeah, see how that goes. let's see what happens. They keep firing him and then keep bringing him back, so... <laughs> Anyway, uh, we wanted to report that story because, like I said, I'm very happy to learn that this wasn't true. We do apologize for reporting something that wasn't. And um, Mia Culpa, we are correcting it on the record live here in the studio, 35 minutes past our bedtime. It's been an amazing night. It's been a really long weekend. It has, we look been forward very, to sleeping all the way into maybe 535 if Fritzy will let us tomorrow. Yeah, and we will won't. see you next week. Thanks, folks. Counterculture Wise is a Stormcat production. Thank you for joining our growing family of listeners. All links from the show are available on our website, counterculturewise.com. Find our archives on any of your favorite podcast hosts. We engage in satire, commentary, and generally laugh at the ridiculousness of our crumbling society. Our only medical or financial advice is to not follow any financial or medical advice given by podcasters. Our animations, interviews, holy crap segment, and other videos are put out on BitChute and Rumble, and only in part on YouTube because they hate free speech. Our show is entirely funded by listeners like you. Visit our ever-expanding merch store or our subscribe star, where you can get outtakes, extra videos, and sneak peeks. If you would like to be a guest on our program, feel free to contact us via our website, just click on the link at the top that says be a guest on our show. For more fun and cat pics, please visit our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. For complaints about our show, please fill out the ID10T form on our website and we will give it the attention it deserves. Meanwhile, no matter how cruel the world may be around you, always remember the importance of kindness. Be kind to each other. Be kind to animals. And be kind to yourself. See you, See you next, next week. week.